stage for a thoughtful discussion on the future of wireless communications. While 3GPP standards over the next few years, up to and including release 18 in 2024, are expected to primarily deal with 5G, the ITU has recently convened the Focus Group on Technologies for Network 2030 FGNet 2030 201 to study the capabilities of networks for the year 2030 and beyond. Received June 23, 2020, accepted July 6, 2020, date of publication July 21, 2020, date of current version July 31, 2020. Digital Object Identifier 10.1 109 access point 2020.3010896 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. ENF, Achilles, Fellow, IEEE, Ahan KAK, and Shuai Ni. Broadband Wireless Networking Laboratory, School of Electrical and Computer Engineering, Georgia Institute of Technology, Atlanta, Georgia, 30332, USA. Corresponding Author. Ahan Kak Ahan at ece.gatech.edu. This work was supported in part by the U.S. National Science Foundation NSF under Grant ECCS 1608579 and Grant CNS 1547353, and in part by the U.S. Army Research Off ICE under Grant W911NF the 19th of January 43. Abstract 6G and beyond will fulfill LL the requirements of a fully connected world and provide ubiquitous wireless connectivity for all. Transformative solutions are expected to drive the surge for accommodating a rapidly growing number of intelligent devices and services. Major technological breakthroughs to achieve connectivity goals within 6G include IA network operating at the THC band with much wider spectrum resources, E intelligent communication environments that enable a wireless propagation environment with active signal transmission and reception, E pervasive artifice seal intelligence, IV large scale network automation, V and all spectrum reconfi durable front end for dynamic spectrum access, V ambient backscatter communications for energy savings, V the Internet of Space things enabled by CubeSats and UAVs, and V cell free massive MIMO communication networks. In this roadmap paper, use cases for these enabling techniques as well as recent advancements on related topics are highlighted, and open problems with possible solutions are discussed, followed by a development timeline outlining the worldwide efforts in the realization of 6G. Going beyond 6G, promising early stage technologies such as the Internet of Nano Things, the Internet of Bio Nano Things, and quantum communications, which are expected to have a far reaching impact on wireless communications, have also been discussed at length in this paper. Index terms 6G, wireless communications, terahertz band, intelligent communication environments, pervasive artifice seal intelligence, network automation, all spectrum reconfi durable transceivers, ambient backscatter communications, cell free massive MIMO, Internet of Nano Things, Internet of Bio Nano Things, quantum communications. I. Introduction Wireless communication systems have experienced substantial revolutionary progress over the past few years. Various stakeholders, including commercial solutions providers, academic research groups, standards bodies, and end users, have all greatly benefited from the radical changes led by the most recent 5G developments, which include paradigm defining techniques such as network softwareization and virtualization, massive MIMO, ultra dense FI cation, and the introduction of new frequency bands. Numerous burgeoning applications and verticals, including virtual and augmented reality VAR e commerce. Contactless payment, machine-to-machine -machine communications, and enhanced mobile broadband, among others, have demonstrated the vast potential of 5G, which the associate editor coordinating the review of this manuscript and approving it for publication was Haipeng Yao, continues to evolve and adapt to a wide variety of emerging use cases. However, as societal needs continue to evolve, there has been a marked rise in a plethora of emerging use cases that cannot be served satisfactorily with 5G. For example, the next generation of VAR, i.e., holographic teleportation, requires TBP's level data rates and microsecond level latency, which cannot be achieved with even the millimeter wave MM wave frequency bands within 5G. Further, increasing industrial automation and the move from Industry 4.0 to the upcoming Industry X0 paradigm will push connectivity density well beyond the 106 km2 metric that 5G is designed for, in addition to requiring an overhaul of existing network management practices. Further, an increase in the connection density will also result in demands for improved energy FHNC, which 5G is not designed for. 
Consequently, the research community has gravitated towards addressing the aforementioned major. Volume 8, 2020 This work is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution 4.0. License. For more information, see creativecommons.org 133,995 I. F. Achilles et al. 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Table 1. The evolution from 5G to 6G wireless systems 1. Challenges, and we posit that ongoing research in the domains of terahertz band communications, intelligent surfaces and environments, and network automation, for example, may very well hold the key to the future of wireless. To this end, an amalgamation of societal needs and technological breakthroughs that serve to enable those needs are the key drivers for a generational leap beyond existing wireless systems. Together, these factors make a strong case for a focused discourse on the next frontier in wireless communications, i.e., 6G systems. We envision that 6G will not only enable a pervasively intelligent, reliable, scalable, and secure terrestrial wireless network, but will also incorporate space communications to form an omnipresent wireless network, in keeping with the need for true wireless ubiquity. This paper details our vision for the future of wireless communications, highlighting emerging use cases and detailing the key enabling technologies that are essential to the realization of 6G. We begin our discussion on 6G by formally introducing the key performance indicators KPIs, that are expected to guide the design of 6G systems. While the ITU Telecommunication Standardization Sector ITUT, is working on a set of off-ICL recommendations for the KPI metrics, the tentative values have appeared in the public domain recently. One. Table 1 presents these values and contrasts them against the metrics associated with 5G. These KPIs serve as the fundamental metrics to evaluate system performance. In particular, from the table, we note the following classes of KPIs. System capacity. This class of KPIs primarily deals with metrics that are associated with system throughput. These include peak data rate, experienced data rate, peak spectral FHNC, experienced spectral FHNC, maximum channel bandwidth, area traf IC capacity, and connection density. Within this context, the experienced data rate and spectral FHNC metrics refer to the values that should be guaranteed to 95% of all user locations. 1. System latency. This class of KPIs includes the end-to-end -end latency metric, along with delay jitter. We note that jitter is a new KPI for 6G that quantifies the latency variations in the system and is absent from 5G. System management. This class of KPIs primarily deals with metrics related to the management and orchestration of networks such as energy FHNC, reliability, and mobility. Here too we note that while 5G does not specify a target KPI for the energy FHNC metric, 6G introduces a target energy FHNC of 1 terabit J. Achieving the KPIs highlighted in Table 1 will require revolutionary breakthroughs across all domains of wireless communications. In particular, we identify the following. Major thrusts. New spectrum usage and radio design paradigms. While 5G ensured the mainstream adoption of MM wave spectrum, the need for higher data rates and consequently larger channel bandwidths will necessitate the incorporation of terahertz THC and sub-THC spectrum within 6G. At the same time, the opening up of new spectrum bands will also require novel radio designs that can simultaneously sense and communicate over the entire M spectrum. Novel network architectures. The classical cell-based architecture of wireless networks cannot scale to meet the area traf IC capacity and connection density requirements put forth by 6G. Instead, 6G will need to incorporate communications infrastructure into the very fabric of the environment. Increasing intelligence and automation. The strict spectral FHNC, reliability, and latency requirements associated with 6G imply that manual conference iteration of the network will no longer be possible. Rather, network intelligence and automation will occupy center stage, helping build an increasingly autonomous network. Enhancing network coverage beyond the terrace trial domain, in order to achieve true wireless ubiquity, 6G will need to expand beyond terrestrial networks, incorporating both near-Earth as well as deep space connectivity. Towards the fulfillment of this grand vision, we note that several enabling solutions have been conceived and are being actively studied. As shown in Figure 1, these technologies include IA network operating at the THC band with abundant spectrum resources, E intelligent communication environments that enable a wireless propagation environment with active signal transmission and reception, 
E. Pervasive artificial intelligence, IV large scale network automation, V. An all spectrum recon FI durable front end for dynamic spectrum access, V. Ambient backscatter communications for energy savings, V. The Internet of Space Things enabled by CubeSats and UAVs, and V. Cell free massive MIMO. 133,996. Volume 8, 2020. I. F. Achilles et al. 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Figure 1. The envisioned key enabling technologies for 6G and beyond wireless communication systems. Communication networks. We also make note of three very promising technologies that are expected to shape the future of communications, yet will not be sufficiently mature for 6G. These include, I the Internet of Nano Things, E the Internet of Bio Nano Things, and E Quantum Communications. Further, in addition to the aforementioned key technologies, holistic security solutions will also be vital to the success of 6G. However, these fall outside the purview of this paper. Further, we posit that while prior art concerning 6G wireless systems has been become increasingly commonplace over the past year 2, 7, a majority of the past publications in this domain focus on a select few topics, potentially hampering a comprehensive overview in terms of key aspects that are expected to shape the future of wireless communications. In addition, discussion concerning beyond 6G systems such as the Internet of Nano Things, the Internet of Bio Nano Things, and quantum communications is equally critical but largely absent from existing publications. As research on 6G wireless systems continues to evolve and break new ground, this paper is intended to equip readers with a targeted insight into the next generation of wireless communications. More specifically, through this paper, we aim to deliver a holistic roadmap for 6G and beyond wireless systems, replete with a detailed discussion surrounding the use cases and key enabling technologies. The larger goal here is to encourage the Scientif IC community to work together towards tackling the critical research challenges associated with the realization of the 6G systems. The rest of this paper is organized as follows. In section 2, we present a wide variety of use cases that will be enabled by 6G. Further, Sections 3, we present details concerning key technologies that are critical to the success of 6G, along with a discussion on the major challenges faced by each. Then, in Section XI, we discuss promising enablers for beyond 6G systems, followed by a timeline for the evolution of 6G in Section 12. Finally, in Section 13, we conclude this paper. 2. Use cases The lessons learned from the continued evolution of 5G systems will serve as the backdrop for use cases that will be best served by 6G. 5G FIRST introduced the targeted use cases of enhanced mobile broadband EMBB, ultra-reliable low-latency communication URLLC, and massive machine-type communications MMTC, intended to serve a wide variety of applications. However, as noted in Section I, there exist a plethora of applications for which the 5G KPIs are not strict enough. As we come to realize the performance trade-offs in terms of throughput, latency, coverage, energy FIHNC, and reliability associated with 5G systems, we can better posit the applications that would benefit IT the most from 6G. As shown in Figure 2, in the following, we present a variety of critical use cases that will be enabled by 6G. A. Multi-sensory holographic teleportation while virtual reality VR and augmented reality AR have immensely benefited from EMBB and URLLC introduced as part of 5G. There are many applications such as advanced healthcare including remote diagnosis and surgery, high-resolution sensing for remote exploration, and near-real-person video conferencing that cannot be adequately served. Volume 8, 2020. 133,997. I. F. Achilles et al. 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Figure 2. Use cases best served by 6G systems. By a combination of AR and VR. To this end, holographic teleportation has been recognized as the natural successor to AR and VR-based solutions. Unlike existing solutions, holographic teleportation operates in a true three-dimensional space and leverages all FIV senses sight, hearing, touch, smell, and taste, to provide a truly immersive experience. At the same time, we note that holographic teleportation requires data rates close to 5 terabits per second and an end-to-end -end latency of less than 1 millisecond 8 both of which are impossible to achieve with 5G systems. Thus, 6G, with its expected TBP's level throughput and sub-millisecond latencies, will play a vital role in building upon the groundwork established by EMBB and URLLC. 
B. Real-time remote healthcare The success of remote healthcare solutions primarily depends on both the quality as well as the availability of connective ITY. 9. Concerning the former, we note that through its use of key enabling technologies such as THC band communications and network automation solutions, 6G will usher in the highest possible wireless communications quality focusing on very high throughput augmented with ultra-low latency. Concerning the latter, the Internet of Space Things will play a vital role in providing pervasive connectivity, thus enhancing the availability of rural healthcare solutions. Further, we expect that within the domain of healthcare, advances in 6G and beyond will not only serve as a connectivity solution, but will also play a vital role in the diagnosis and treatment of diseases as detailed in Section 11b. C. Autonomous cyber-physical systems Autonomous vehicles and UAVs are some of the most promising cyber-physical systems in existence today 10 one The operation of these autonomous systems is characterized by the exchange of large amounts of data between the constituent nodes, i.e., both vehicles and UAVs, relating to high-resolution real-time mapping of the terrain, route optimization, and traffic IC and safety information. While the resulting large volumes of data must be delivered within strict deadlines in an error-free manner, it also imperative to note that these nodes typically operate at speeds in excess of 100 km per hour. Therefore in addition to providing sub-millisecond latency and very high reliability, the connectivity solution that enables autonomous cyber-physical systems must also offer robust operation at very high speeds, which is not possible with existing 5G systems 12. D. Intelligent Industrial Automation Over the past few years, Industry 4.0. 13 has been the driving force behind industrial automation based on the concepts of supply chain optimization, autonomous equipment, additive manufacturing, data analytics, and the Internet of Things IoT. Yet, these concepts are treated as silos working in isolation, limiting the true potential of industrial automation. On the other hand, the upcoming Industry X0. Paradigm 14 seeks to realize synergies between the various nuances of industrial automation through its use of artificial intelligence. Vital to this vision are networked factories that serve as critical sources of big data that helps inform decision making. To this end, the modern industrial FL or is expected to require reliable high throughput connectivity across thousands of devices often with sub-millisecond response times, making it the perfect use case for the next frontier in wireless communications. E. High Performance Precision Agriculture Within the broader domain of precision agriculture, soil moiture measurements have been a mainstay in irrigation desi science for decades now. However, real-time measurements and irrigation automation solutions still face challenges stemming. 133,998. Volume 8, 2020. I. F. Achilles et al. 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Figure 3. The THZ band offers hundreds of GHZ usable spectrum resources for wireless communication links in long, medium, short, indoor, and near field range. From a lack of robust wireless coverage, going beyond simple automated irrigation solutions, high performance precision agriculture is largely centered around delivering data driven insights to address the specific IC needs of customers, farms, crop, and soil. At the same time, scalable and timely access to such data is a major challenge owing to gaps in rural connectivity. Therefore, we expect that 6G, with its focus on ubiquitous wireless access, will play a major role in enhancing the adoption of technology in agricultural production. F. Space connectivity While near-Earth and deep space connectivity are still nascent within 5G, there are a wide variety of use cases ranging from radio astronomy and remote sensing to navigation and backhauling that would stand to benefit IT from the pervasive connectivity offered by 6G. More specifically, such applications include freight tracking, terrestrial cellular off-l loading, environmental monitoring, and long-range UAV coordination, to name a few. To this end, the Internet of Space Things as described in Section X, will serve as the key enabling technology for beyond-Earth connectivity, for fairing the reach of 6G systems. G. Smart infrastructure and environments The use cases discussed thus far primarily deal with the use of third-party systems that seek to leverage advanced telecommunications infrastructure. Simultaneously, the evolution of such infrastructure itself is an important use case. Going beyond network optimization strategies, there is also a need for exercising control over the propagation of wireless signals. To this end, we note that in 5G and its predecessor SYS-TEMS, the wireless communication environment has always played a passive role. 
However, with the ever-increasing demand for data, as evidenced by the applications presented herein, control over the manner in which electromagnetic waves interact with the indoor and outdoor environment will be critical to the success of 6G. In this direction, we posit that the intelligent communication environments described in Section IV will play a leading role in the ubiquity and pervasiveness of the next generation of wireless systems. 3. Terahertz band communications recent years have witnessed a dramatic rise in wireless data traffic IC brought forth by numerous exciting technologies in wireless communications. This exponential growth has been accompanied by the demand for higher data rates and better coverage. 1. 5. Among emerging research and development trends in wireless communications, terahertz band 0.1 minus 10 terahertz communications has been envisioned as one of the key enabling technologies for the next decade. Buoyed by the availability of ultra-wide spectrum resources, the THC band can provide terabits per second TBPs, links for a plethora of applications, ranging from ultra-fast massive data transfer among nearby devices in terabit wireless personal and local area networks to high-definition video conferencing among mobile devices in small cells. Recently, the Federal Communications Commission FCC, has released the frequency bands above 95 GHz for research purposes 1.6. While a handful of cellular operators have adopted low millimeter wave frequencies for their 5G SR devices with the intention of achieving a maximum data rate of 100 gigabits per second, the test results thus far leave much to be desired, showing a peak data rate of around 1 gigabit per second. Point one: This gap between the targeted and practically achievable data rates is INFL influenced by multiple factors, including a high complexity in realistic communication channels, imperfections in circuitry design, and interference from other systems operating in adjacent frequency bands among others. Nevertheless, even though the THZ bands have been applied in imaging and object detection, as well as for THZ radiation spectroscopy and astronomical research, their use cases in wireless communications are still under investigation. Lying between the MM wave spectrum and infrared light spectrum, as shown in Figure 3, THZ bands, with their abundant spectrum resources, have been previously deemed as a no-man's land. However, major progress in the domains of transceiver and antenna design has seen THZ links become a promising option for realizing indoor communications networks. More recently, there has been significant progress on realizing wireless network on chip WNOC using THZ bands 17. A. Use cases of THZ band communications different from wireless networks at lower frequencies. THZ band wireless communications has several unconventional application scenarios, owing to the distinct electromagnetic and photonics characteristics of this tremendously high frequency band. In addition to the promised TBP's level, Verizon.com, Volume 8, 2020, 133,999, I, F, et al., 6G and beyond. The Future of Wireless Communication Systems Links for Cellular Systems, THZ Band Spectrum can also be Leveraged for the following scenarios Local Area Networks Several spectrum windows are feasible for short-range links within 10 meters in CLUD ING 625-725 GHz and 780-910 GHz 1.8 THZ Band Communications is expected to form the THZ optics bridge to enable seamless transition between FIB or optics and THZ band links with zero latency. Personal area networks. THZ band communications can provide FIB or like data rate without the need of wires between multiple devices at a distance of a few meters. Such communication scenarios can be found in indoor off ICES and multimedia kiosks. Data center networks. Conventional data centers manage and maintain connectivity in wired networks using cables, resulting in high costs in terms of both installation and reconfiguration. On the other hand, THZ links provide promising prospects for seamless connectivity at ultra-high speeds in FIXED networks and adaptability for hardware reconfiguration. Wireless network on-chip as the trend in transceiver hardware development motivates a higher level of integration and miniaturization as well as weight rejection, the THZ band links can serve as a promising candidate to establish wireless connections among different modules within the transceiver chassis, in order to replace the wired connections commonly found in existing transceiver hardware products. Nano networks. With its wavelength falling into the nanometer 10 minus 9 meters range, the THZ band can operate better than any other frequencies in nano networks. Within this context, a nano network is a set of interconnected nano devices or nano machines for information exchange, storage, and computation. 
A more detailed overview can be found in Section 11a. Intersatellite Communications Lying largely outside the Earth's atmosphere, intersatellite links are not constrained by atmospheric attenuation, which makes the THC band a favorable candidate for such communication links. Compared to existing spectrum resources allocated for intersatellite links, the THC band has a much wider bandwidth which can accommodate more satellites and achieve higher link performance. Unlike the widely used optical links, the THC band does not impose stringent requirements on beam alignment, which can help maintain a high level of link stability as satellites drift out of their orbits. b. Devices in the THC band the need for higher output power, lower phase noise, and better receiving sensitivity in THC band transceivers has driven advances in corresponding device development. Currently, three main directions are deployed in THC band signal generation, photonics-based, electronic-based, and emerging material-based, respectively. In the photonics-based approach, many 3V semiconductors, including gallium arsenide gauze and indium phosphide INP, which provide high electron mobility, are excellent candidates especially for high frequency, i.e., above 100 GHz applications. Such photonics-based techniques generate time domain pulses with lengths of femtoseconds 10 minus 15s and experimental works have demonstrated 50 gigabits per second data links in an indoor scenario at 300 gigahertz using the uni-traveling carrier photodiode UTCPD technique 19. The UTCPDs and modify ed UTCPD structures, an effective photo mixing solution which allows wider spectrum tuning and simpler construction compared to laser pulse generators, has pushed the output signal range from 300 GHz to 2.5. THZ, with output powers of 10 microwatts at 300 GHz and 1 microwatt at 1 terahertz 20. Additionally, a design based on slot antenna integrated UTCPDs has shown superior performance in Gen. Rated THZ band signal strengths at 350 minus 850 gigahertz and 900 gigahertz minus 1.6. THZ, compared to that of the Bowtie antenna. Integrated UTCPD 21. Similar photonics based THZ signal generation at above 1 terahertz can be realized using quantum SOS CAD lasers, QCLs, and other solid state lasers 22. However, the operations of such devices are limited at room temperatures, requiring liquid helium cooling, which affects their deployment in local area networks with space restrictions. Furthermore, photoconductive antennas PCAs, have been utilized widely for both pulse and continuous wave signal generation at THZ band 23 demonstrating a wide spectrum up to 4.5. THZ with a remarkable dynamic range of up to 100 decibels 2.4. In parallel to the photonics-based approach for THZ band device design which down-converts the optical frequencies, the electronic-based THZ band signal generation relies on frequency up-conversion using multipliers 25 including frequency doublers and triplers, as well as backward wave oscillators 26. A recent experiment has demonstrated an all-electronics-based wireless link at 240 GHz with a throughput of 50 gigabits per second and a maximum 29% error vector magnitude using QPSK modulation 27. The backward wave oscillator, which is a compact design to generate THZ band signals based on the mechanism of energy transfer from an electron beam to an electromagnetic wave through a vacuum tube, has been used to generate signals at 300 GHz with an output power of 1 W in Plasma Diagnostics 26. Among the two commonly used approaches, the photonics-based design benefit TS from a relatively simpler transceiver architecture based on the photo-mixing technique, while the electronics-based solution relies on cascaded frequency up-conversion of RF signals, which sets stringent requirements on linear range operation and potentially limits the terahertz bandwidth. On the other hand, the electronics-based approach is less sensitive to environmental conditions, such as temperature, humidity, among others, which makes it more favorable for outdoor operations, whereas the link reliability from its photonics-based counterpart is affected by scattered particles in the channel, making the THZ band link less robust. 134,000. Volume 8, 2020. I. F. Acuities et al. 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Besides these classical approaches for THZ band device development, new materials, including graphene, carbon nanotubes, and graphene nanoribbons, are gaining more attention due to their extremely high electron mobility in the order of 8,000 minus 10,000 centimeters, 2 vs at room temperature, as calm, paired to 1, 400 square centimeters vs of silicon, and 8, 500 centimeters, 2 vs 
of gauze, which means that the link throughput can be potentially up to 10 times higher than is currently achievable with most semiconductors to aid. The graphene-based devices, offering outstanding mechanical, electrical, and optical properties, have been utilized in the development of power detectors at 600 GHz 29 and 200 GHz 30, as well as plasmonic antenna arrays and transceivers 31 32. Graphene-based devices have the potential to break new ground in reaching the desired level of performance at much higher frequencies above 1 terahertz. C. Physical layer modeling at the THC band The realization of wireless communications at THC frequency size requires the development of accurate channel models to capture the impact of both channel peculiarities including the high atmospheric attenuation and molecular absorption rates at various transmission windows, as well as the propagation effects including refl action, scattering, and diffraction, with respect to different materials. Current research has reported several efforts to provide fundamental understanding of such channels. For example, an early work in 33 demonstrates the remarkable capacity the THC band channel can support for short transmission distances. The model provides a detailed analysis on the effect of attenuation caused by the molecular absorption and spreading loss, on which the performance of channel throughput is heavily dependent. One step further, in order to extend the transmission distance at THC bands, an idea dubbed as the ultra-massive multiple input multiple output OMIMO communications, enabled by an element array size of 1024 times 1024 with plasmonic nano antennas can drastically boost the signal strength by steering and focusing the transmitted beams in both space and frequency 34. Correspondingly, a um MIMO channel model has been developed in 35, which takes into account the role of such arrays. Additionally, a stochastic channel model for indoor THZ band communications at 300 GHz has been reported in 36 which characterizes both spatial and temporal domain channel information. More recently, based on the A4 and Tiond applicable scenarios in the THZ band, a stochastic channel model for kiosk applications has been reported in 37 which ranges from 200 minus 340 GHz. The main take Away from current models validated using either Mayas Yoramans or the ray tracing technique is that the direct path between the transmitter and the receiver and the single bounce ref elected paths dominate the received power, while other channel effects, including diffraction and scattering, attenuate power significantly along propagation. On the basis of the ultra-wideband channel characterization, THZ band communications faces a critical and challenging task of synchronization in the receiver design. Existing pulse-based modulation schemes permit the use of low-complexity non-coherent analog detectors, e.g., energy detector and autocorrelation receiver, which involve the multiplication of the received signal with itself, followed by an integrator. However, a more advanced non-coherent receiver architecture in 38 based on a continuous time-moving average symbol detection scheme demonstrates better performance compared to previous detection schemes for pulse-based modulations in terms of the symbol error rate. In addition, robust frequency and timing synchronize a TION for multi-carrier communication in the THC band is desirable to decode multiple incoming signal streams. The work presented in 39 realizes both a low-rate sampling scheme for channels with high SNR values and a maximum likelihood-based algorithm for low SNR channels with satisfying bit error rate performance. More recently, a synchronization scheme based on medium access control protocols is reported in 40, which shows good performance in both a macro scale scenario to overcome the distance limitation at the THC band and a nano scale scenario for nano devices for energy harvesting. Similarly, given the peculiar ultra wideband nature and frequency selectivity of THC band communications, equalization solutions pose another relevant challenge 1541. In 42 three equalization solutions, including the Tomlinson Harashima precoding, a waveform with interference management for time reversal systems, and an iterative algorithm with adaptive soft feedback, are reviewed and compared for an indoor channel. Results show that the iterative algorithm with adaptive soft feedback yields the most promising BER performance for 2. D. Medium access control in THZ band communications on top of physical layer channel models, the medium access control MACT schemes in THZ band communications should adopt certain spatial and spectral features in order to provide solutions in resolving issues such as the deafness problem and loss blockage, among others 4344. Different from commonly used MAC solutions in RF systems that utilize omnidirectional antennas, such as Carrier Sense Multiple Access with Collision Avoidance CSMA-CA, the MAC protocols designed for THZ band rely on handshakes between transceivers with highly directional beams. 
These razor-sharp beams can provide higher power radiation gain and prolong the transmission distance, but when misalignment happens, the deafness problem arises. As such, the deafness avoidance approach is required in MAC scheme design. Existing SOLU tie-ons utilized in IEEE 802.15.3C, 45, and others employ a beam training phase to estimate and steer beams towards daytime devices. Recent works also propose methods based on angular division multiplexing, 46, and a priori aided channel tracking schemes, 47. The results in such proposed solutions suggest that with good beam alignment strategies the channel throughput can be improved significantly. Volume 8, 2020. 134,001. I. F. Acuities et al. 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Moreover, the MAC protocols can also resolve the issue of loss blockage where the received power of a user device may undergo deep fading due to the device being held in a manner that blocks the loss path. Studies have shown that such attenuation by the human body can be as high as 20 decibels at 60 GHz and up 4950. To mitigate the blockage problem, researchers have proposed a multi-hop scheme at the MM Wave and THZ bands to form alternative routes 5152. A careful link level scheduling and neighbor discovery process is necessary to achieve high throughput while maintaining low interference. E. Open problems in THZ band communications currently, the fabrication and testing of THZ band antenna arrays remains a relevant challenge. Some techniques based on photolithography, electrobeam lithography, among others, are able to produce the front end with hundreds of plasmonic antenna elements. The utilization of large antenna arrays can extend the signal coverage by forming array radiation patterns with main lobes of high directivity, thus focusing energy towards desired directions. However, such highly directional beams limit coverage in the angular domain, causing low energy efficiency at the transmitter to serve each user. A recent solution named, THC PRISM, has been proposed to form multiple beams with slight frequency shifts towards different directions while maintaining good distance coverage, 53, in addition to other proposed solutions discussed in Section 3C to solve the transmission distance problem. This design employs true time delays for RF chains before phase shifters to obtain a PRISM-like effect, which spreads the original beam into several beams, each with a slight frequency shift with respect to the center frequency. In parallel to the quest for more novel solutions in antenna design, other remaining challenges reside in the control and signal processing schemes associated with transceiver designs in the THC band. On the one hand, real-time control algorithms are needed. On the other hand, communication protocols for coordination between the transmitter, receiver, and ref electorase are needed. Among others, in 54, researchers reported a smart ref electoray assisted MM wave system compatible with IEE 802.11 ADD. Besides the design of the ref electoray and a study on deployment strategies, a three-way beam searching protocol is developed, in which the ref electoray coordinates with the transmitter through a 2.4 GHZ control channel in order to discover the best joint transmit and ref LECT sectors for which the signal at the receiver is maximized. However, this work does not capture the extended functionalities of plasmonic ref electorase. Furthermore, when highly directional beams are utilized at mobile transceivers, a relevant challenge arises from the limited FIL to view of antenna arrays for each transceiver to locate the next hop to forward its data. Thus, new routing solutions are necessary for THC band communications to FIC and discover and establish links. A study in 55 reports a solution in link discovery at THC band using a leaky wave antenna to sense the angular information of a user. IV. Intelligent communication environments along with the rapid growth in the number of wireless devices, services, and applications, a corresponding demand for higher speed wireless communications has burgeoned in recent years. Nevertheless, the major challenge at MM wave and THZ band frequencies is the limited communication distance because of the remarkably high path loss inherent to small wavelengths and the limited transmission power of MM wave and THZ band transceivers 5-6. Current solutions primarily focus on the advancement of wireless transceiver hardware and software, as well as network optimization strategies. However, the wireless propagation medium has been largely neglected. The wireless communication environments, for both indoor and outdoor scenarios, can be actively utilized in order to become controllable for signal propagation. To control signal propagation in environments is essentially to control how electromagnetic waves interact with scatterers, which include indoor furniture and outdoor buildings as well as other infrastructure. 
Typically, the control label behaviors of electromagnetic waves include controlled REFL action, absorption, wave collimation, signal wave guiding, and polarization tuning, as illustrated in Figure 4. The notion of intelligent communication environments resides in the control algorithms where deep learning and reinforcement learning are to be exploited to dynamically conference IGER the environments. In the following subsections, we elaborate on these controllable wave behaviors, current research efforts, as well as corresponding open issues. A. Basics of intelligent communication environments The intelligent environments can be seen as a three-dimensional structure with several layers, each with different functionalities. Recent research under the EU research project, Visor Surf, has demonstrated a structure with FIVA main layers, which are, from top to bottom, the M behavior layer, the actuation and sensing layer, the shielding layer, the computing layer, and the communication layer, respectively 5-7. Specify Kali, the M behavior layer is composed of metasurfaces, a two-dimensional representation of metamaterials, and has a tunable impedance to control direct ions of ref L action of the EM waves. Some other works use ref L actor A antennas as the top surface, 58-5-9. The actuation and sensing layer consists of circuits for phase shifting and sensors for impinging signal sensing. Some options for actuation include pin diodes with controllable biasing voltage as switches in ref electra antennas, and complementary metal oxide semiconductors CMOS transistors as well as microelectromechanical MEMS switches for metasurfaces. The shielding layer isolates the upper and lower parts of the layered structure so as to minimize the possible interference. The computing layer serves to control the phase shifts and process sensed impinging waves. To this end, another reported solution makes use of FIL programmable gated arrays FPGAs, to full FILL such functions on metasurfaces 60. Finally, the communication layer connects all upper layers. 134002. Volume 8, 2020. I. F. Acuities et al. 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Figure 4. Conceptual design of a plasmonic reflector array able to unconventionally manipulate M waves 48 and serves as the gateway towards the central controller which processes all connection requests, forwards and receives signals, and conducts the aforementioned controlled wave functions. Compared to existing relays with multiple antennas which are widely deployed in wireless networks, intelligent communication environments offer the following advantages. I, a higher spatial diversity due to the wide coverage of the intelligent surface with controllable antenna arrays, e, a reduced processing time given that the computing and communication layers are directly underneath the surface layer, and e, a higher FLX ability in network routing when impinging signals come from different directions and the intelligent surfaces are able to collimate waves and ref LECT them towards desired directions. B. Functionalities of intelligent environments bolstered by the layered structure, intelligent surfaces can enable controlled M-wave operations. At micro and MM wave frequencies, metasurfaces are considered as a good candidate. While at THC bands, graphene-based plasmonic antenna arrays are desirable. In metasurfaces, a metaatom is the smallest unit, which is a conductor with a size smaller than half the wavelength of the signal. Metasurfaces can thus control the impinging M waves with a very fine granularity. The metaatoms are interconnected by a set of miniaturized controllers that connect the switches of the metasurfaces in the computing layer, while a gateway serves as the connective ITY unit in the communication layer to provide inter-element and external control. At THZ bands, when the metasurfaces do not yield optimal performance, the graphene-based plasmonic antenna arrays serve as a promising alternative. Compared to metallic antenna arrays, the plasmonic antenna arrays can have much denser element layout and go beyond the conventional lambda-2 sampling of space towards more precise space and frequency beamforming, owing to the physics of plasmonics. In our previous work, we have demonstrated that, graphene can be used to build nanotransceivers and nanoantennas with a maximum dimension of lambda-20 at THC frequencies, allowing them to be densely integrated in very small footprints 1024 elements in less than 1 mm2. As shown in Figure 4, 34. Therefore, by incorporating the graphene-based plasmonic antenna arrays at THC bands and metasurfaces operating at MM wave bands, we can expand the operational spectrum of intelligent environments and utilize them in transmission and reception in a controllable manner. C. Layered structure of intelligent communication environments based on the operating principles of the aforementioned intelligent communication environments. In this subsection, we anatomize the layered structure and detail each layer's functionality. 1. Metamaterial plane The metamaterial plane is also the surface plane, as shown in Figure 4. 
In designs based on ref electorase, phase shifts are applied to each element to improve useful signals while cancelling interference 5861. The metasurface element proposed in 62 with millimeter scale dimensions is connected to a pin diode with a bias voltage to control operation modes, such as altering polarizations. In general, this layer comprises the supported M function of the tile as well as its operation principle. In particular, ref A employ modifiable phase shifts applied over their surface. In the far FIL of radiation, ref elected rays can be considered co-directional, and their superposition constructive or destructive is controlled by the applied phase shifts 6-3. Hence, wave scattering or controlled ref electing functions can be attained. Metamaterial tiles, however, operate as surfaces with tunable local impedance 64. Impinging waves create inductive surface currents over the tile, which can be routed by tuning the local impedance across the tile. Notice that the Huygens principle dictates that any M wavefront can be traced back to a current distribution over a surface 6-5. As a result, in principle, metamaterials can produce any custom M function as a response to an impinging wave. Common functions include wave steering, focusing, collimating i.e., producing a planar wavefront as a response to an impinging wave polarizing, phase altering, full or partial absorption, frequency selective FILTERING and even modulation 60, 64. Volume 8, 2020. 134,003. I. F. Achilles et al. 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. 2. Sensing an actuation plane in order to control the M waves per actual channel conditions, the programmable surfaces are expected to sense the propagation environment and actuate the upper surface plane accordingly. Such layer contains hardware elements that can be controlled to achieve a phase shift or impedance distribution across a tile. Commonly, the layer comprises arrays of planar antennas such as copper patches and multi-state switches between them. Ref electorate tiles usually employ pin diodes with controllable biasing voltage as switches 62. Metamaterials have employed a wider range of choices, both in the shape and geometry of the planar antennas and in the nature of switches. CMOS transistors, pin diodes, microelectromechanical switches MEMS, micro FLUIDIC switches, magnetic and thermal switches are but a few of the considered options in the literature 66. Notably, some options such as micro FLUID switches are state preserving in the sense that they require power only to change state but not to maintain it i.e., contrary to biased pin diodes. Sensing impinging waves are also necessary for exerting FIC and control over them. While this information can be provided by external systems 67 with dynamic channels and mobile end users, tiles capable of incorporating sensing capabilities can be immune from the channel aging problem 68. The sensing can be direct, employing special IZED sensors, or indirect, e.g., via deducing some impinging wave attributes from currents or voltages between tile elements. 3. Computing plane The computing functionality serves the processing functionality in the controllable surface system. In the metasurface designs in 60 and 62 FPGA-based controllers are connected to the metasurfaces to implement the computing func ions. This layer comprises the computing hardware that controls the actuation and sensing elements. Its minimum computing duties include the mapping of local phase or impedance values to corresponding actuator states. Ref LEC terrain tiles commonly implement this layer using FPGAs and shift registers 62. Metasurfaces, and specify Kali hypersurfaces, can alternatively employ standard IoT devices for the same purpose. Moreover, they can optionally include computing hardware elements ASICs distributed over the tile metaatoms 6970. This can enable autonomous and cognitive tiles, where metaatoms detect the presence and state of one another, and take local actuation decisions to meet a general functionality objective. Nonetheless, these advanced capabilities are not required for programmable wireless environments. 4. Communication plane The communication plane passes the signals from the processing layer to corresponding metasurface layer and collects signals from the sensing and actuation plane. In complicated programmable surface systems, communication occurs among planes to realize various M-wave control functions. The command signals normally operate at much lower frequencies compared to the ones emitted from programmable surfaces. Such signals prove to be more FIC and in tuning the bias voltage of the pin diodes 60. This layer comprises the communication stack and CON NECTS actuation and sensing layer as well as computing layer with tile external devices such as controllers. In the simplest case, this layer is implemented within the computing hardware, 
acting as a gateway to the external world using any common protocol such as the Ethernet. Hypersurface tiles with embedded distributed computing elements at ET only require inter-tile communication schemes to handle the information exchange between smart meta-atoms. Both wired and wireless intra-tile communication is possible, 69-70. In both cases, the ASIC hardware employs custom and non-standard protocols. D. Use cases of intelligent environments with the utilization of well-coordinated tiles in the intelligent environments, the wireless system can be greatly improved in terms of communication efficacy. 1. On-signal propagation enhancements from the perspective of multiple users and moving users, the intelligent environment system is envisioned to serve a large number of users with more realistic user patterns, including mobile users and users in a cluster. Addition Ally, the intelligent environment system should ensure physical layer security against jamming and eavesdropping, an increasingly important problem that remains to be solved. Transmission Distance, for users in the N-loss areas relative to the transmitter, the intelligent environment system is expected to extend the transmission distance and reach previously uncovered areas through wave GU editing or ref election. Simulation results in 67 demonstrate that at 60 GHz the coverage can be extended to an entire N-loss area. Interference mitigation. Due to the scenario with multiple users, there is inevitably concern of interference. As in the envisioned scheme, each intelligent environment unit is dedicated to an individual user, thus the majority of interference will reside in the wireless section of the end-to-end -end link. Reliability. The primary efforts in terms of physical layer reliability include using highly directional anton NAS to nullify jamming, forming exclusion areas, assigning secret keys to legitimate users, and so on. From the perspective of fundamental propagation channels with intelligent environments, good reliability is achieved when the eavesdroppers do not have the knowledge of the frequencies where packages are transmitted, or the eavesdroppers are in the same frequency channel but with much higher noise which makes the intercepted data impossible to decode 71. Therefore, the dedicated links in intelligent environments are inherently secure. 134004. Volume 8, 2020. I. F. Achilles et al. 6G and beyond. The Future of Wireless Communication Systems 2. On the physical layer security the more frequent data exchange between users and S or vice providers exposes a higher risk of personal and private data leakage. The 6G wireless network should not only inherit existing network secrecy measures, but also provide enhanced physical layer security associated with new enabling techniques. In current 5G networks, highly directional beams are used for MM wave communications in spatial domain to prevent signals from being intercepted. However, a recent study has shown that such pencil-sharp beams are still vulnerable to agile eavesdropping, 7-2. Other physical layer encryption algorithms, including source coding approaches such as the low-density parity check LDPC code, are demonstrated with optimal performance under specific IC conditions, 7-3. Furthermore, existing solutions in the ReconFI Gurable Intelligence Surface apply ref electorase, which do not have the capability to effectively distinguish target users from malicious attackers. Hence, a solution based on the intelligent environment serves the purpose of identifying unintended recipients, creating null areas, and improving link secrecy rate. Essentially, the envisioned intelligent environments have the capability to sense user locations and exchange such information with a system controller to verify the user's authentic ITY. Only AFFIR MATIV users shall be served with signal streams from the sender. On the other hand, connection requests from unauthorized users, i.e., eavesdroppers, will be nullified from attempting to access secure information or even trying to establish links with the sender. In practice, the intelligent environments can be conference igured to tune the phases of multipath components in the channel, such that those arrived at intended users can be coherently combined with boosted received signal strengths, whereas those intercepted by eavesdroppers will be scrambled or even cancelled due to non-coherent combining 7-4. Simulation results demonstrate a 6 decibel attenuation observed at the received signal strength from the eavesdropper, validating the proposed physical layer security solution 74. Hence, the good channel secrecy is achieved when such unintended users do not own the knowledge of equalizer to recover the transmitted signals from noise. E. Open problems in intelligent environments A number of open problems need to be addressed in order to facilitate the intelligent environments in becoming a market-ready solution. Trade-off between dimensions and energy consumption. In terms of real-world applications, the intelligent environments are expected to be coated onto surfaces of interior walls and or ceilings, and building facades, which require dimensions that can both FIT-specify C installation areas and satisfy link requirements. 
Meanwhile, with more REF electra elements and RF chains built into the system, the energy consumption will also increase, due to the advanced signal processing CI architecture. Therefore, how to achieve an economic solution? To balance the overall dimension and energy consumption while serving users to its desired performance is a non-trivial issue. Compatibility with existing solutions. Current Wi-Fi access points have a mature protocol stack to sense the channel and establish links with users. In order for the intelligent environments to assist with improving indoor signal coverage, it needs to be compatible with the IEEE 802.11 series standard. For now this is still under research and serves as a worthy problem for novel solutions. Standardization. With many candidate approaches being investigated in REF electorates, metasurfaces, frequency selective surfaces, among others, there has not been a consensus on how to standardize the device architecture, maximum emitted power, and communication protocols. As more ideas evolve, a standardization effort within a work group is necessary towards a solitary framework. Inclusion of advanced application scenarios. As a promising solution for future generation of wireless systems, the intelligent communication environments should be designed to FIT to more advanced scenarios, for example, in use cases with a very large quantity of devices as in the Internet of Things, under high demands of real-time video streaming, with devices of high mobile ITY, among others. Smart Resource Allocation Solutions Resources in the spatial, temporal, and spectral domains should be allocated in an optimal manner to satisfy per-user demand. AI-driven design and optimization. In complicated scenarios under which no closed-form solutions can be found using conventional optimization approaches, advanced algorithms in artificial intelligence can assist in the deployment of intelligent communication environments, especially when complex surface layout or structures are in presence. V. Pervasive artificial intelligence In the past few years, the FIL of artificial intelligence AI, has witnessed immense growth, leading to its application in a wide variety of FILs across both academia and industry. In the realm of communications and signal processing, AI can be readily applied to cognitive radios, remote sensing, computer vision, and network management. More specifically, in the domain of wireless communications, AI and its associated algorithms are also gradually proving their utility in various emerging techniques such as massive MIMO communications which requires FIC and channel estimation and symbol detection. Such tasks often do not yield low complexity optimal solutions in complex channels 75 and thus parallel processing inherent in machine learning can be favorably leveraged to enhance computational capacity. Admittedly, even though current wireless communication networks follow a layered structure, in which each layer primarily serves several functions, applications of AI and Volume 8, 2020, 134,005, I, F, Achilles et al., 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Figure 5, applications of artificial intelligence at different layers of wireless systems. Relevant algorithms are gradually bridging the gap across layers in a way that can globally optimize the performance in the entire wireless network. However, in order to provide a marked trail to navigate through a plethora of pervasive AI applications, this section is organized based on the existing layers. It is worth noting that AI is a broad concept, under which reside several branches covering interleaved research topics, such as robotics, natural language processing, machine learning ML computer vision, among others. In this section, we focus specifically on the ML algorithms and their applications in wireless communications under the AI umbrella. These two terms are thus used interchangeably in this section. As shown in Figure 5, artificial intelligence can be applied to each layer of the wireless network. At the network layer, machine learning ML algorithms can be used for traf IC clustering to further adapt the network resources to various scenarios 7-6. At the physical and MAC layers, deep learning can optimize resource allocation strategies for power distribution and modulation and coding schemes, among others. Furthermore, machine learning algorithms can also assist with channel estimation and multi-user detection. A. AI in the physical layer Traditionally, physical layer modeling has been model-oriented, a practice in which mathematical models following a certain framework are proposed and optimized under constraints to satisfy a series of predetermined performance requirements. For example, in order to conduct channel estimation, a channel model is assumed along with other parametric conference iterations. These model-based solutions USU Ally perform well if the derivation of mathematical models is relatively straightforward or there exists a closed-form solution. The models can then be validated by FIL-MAYAS-YORAMONS or numerical simulations. 
However, in real-world scenarios, the applicability of such model-based solutions falls short in complicated environments, due to factors such as non-linearity inside systems and uncontrollable interference, among others. On the other hand, another approach, which is based on statistics, or data sets, builds the model through learning from the data. This method is particularly useful when theoretical analysis is intractable or when a closed-form solution is difficult to obtain. For example, in diffusion-based channels commonly found in molecular communication, the channel characteristics depend largely on the environment, making them challenging to model theoretically 7-7. In such cases, some data is used for training, which can help establish a model, while other data is used for testing in order to validate the model. To date, artificial intelligence has demonstrated its usefulness in various physical layer techniques. For example, in channel estimation and symbol detection, Deep learning approaches reported in 78-79 have shown that the proposed deep learning-based symbol detection algorithms can provide robust and accurate results with reduced complexity. Furthermore, a deep learning method based on the deep neural network architecture also demonstrates an improved channel estimation accuracy under the effects of non-linearities of power amplifiers, IQ imbalance, and quantization errors induced by hardware impairments 8.0. An autoencoder-based communication system is proposed to reconstruct the transmitted signals from channel impairment based on trained deep neural networks in an end-to-end -end man NER-81. Furthermore, self-supervised learning is becoming a trend for user localization since it has been demonstrated that relevant methods can significantly reduce the size of labeled dataset for FIC and processing 82. B. AI in wireless networks and other essential layers of a wireless network, the existence of rich datasets lends itself to the applicability of machine learning-based solutions. In routing protocol design for wireless sensor networks, researchers have successfully utilized reinforcement learning methods to achieve a more energy FIC and routing scheme for underwater sensor networks A3. In the vehicular industry, autonomous driving has already been studied and become a reality in some cities in Arizona, US.2 with respect to vehicular communication. Forbes.com, 134,006, Volume 8, 2020, I, F, Achilles et al., 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Networks, due to the constant movement of vehicles, a predictive model based on real-time data has superiority over traditional theoretical models in terms of accuracy. Artificial intelligence and its plethora of algorithms can be applied in varied ways in such networks. Autoencoders for predicting TRAF ICFL 84K means clustering for TRAF IC congestion control 85 and Q learning for intelligent resource management 86 among others 87. In the Internet of Space Things, with our envisioned multi-band communication capabilities in both inter-satellite and ground-to-satellite links, we have proposed a deep neural network-based resource allocation strategy to enable a flexible scheme for cube SATs to stay connected without human intervention from the ground 88. Apart from advancements in algorithm development, a potential issue dwells on the location of data storage and processing, which has largely happened in central data centers in the cloud. For devices distributed in a wide geographic range, this undoubtedly adds significant delays in performing tasks which require real-time operation. Moreover, a centralized computing manner is not desired from perspectives of data security and constrained in processing capacity 89. In order to relieve such challenges, Edge AI pushes local devices to full file operation and management tasks. Admit Tedly, this could lead to possible overburden in local devices, since they are not equipped with as powerful processing units as the cloud processing center. However, research efforts in this direction are dedicated to I acceleration in boosting the hardware's processing capability, and E leveraging the coordination between local and central processing units to optimization task distribution. C. AI in network management and orchestration I, or more specified Kali ML, has an integral role to play in the management of networks 9092. In fact, Clark et al. introduced the concept of the knowledge plane 93 back in 2003, describing it as a pervasive ML-based system within the network that is geared towards providing services and advice to other elements of the network. More recently, with S of Wear DefiNet Networking SDN and Network Function Virtualization NFV becoming mainstream, large-scale data acquisition has become easier than ever before, mocking a strong case for ML-based management and orchestra on primitives within 6G, ultimately leading to full network automation as discussed in the next section. In particular, the domain of network management presents a wide variety of problems that can be broadly categorized into 91. 
Supervised learning. Supervised learning is typically applied to problems relating to TRAF IC prediction 94 and classify cation 95 as well as slice resource prediction 96. While the former primarily involves preemptively determining the network TRAF IC load, as well as determining the applications, protocols and COS classes the TRAF IC belongs to, for FINA grained TRAF IC. Engineering, the latter involves predicting the resource requirements associated with different network slices based on the anticipated TRAF IC load. Reinforcement learning, reinforcement learning typically FINDS use in problems associated with resource management 9798. For example, the popular virtual network embedding problem wherein the network orchestrator performs optimal placement of virtual network functions onto the underlying physical substrate, is highly amenable to reinforcement learning 99. Other applications include elastic scaling of network infrastructure, 100 failure prevention, and conference iteration rollback 101. Unsupervised learning. While both supervised learning and reinforcement learning have shown significant promise in the network management domain, we note that there exist certain use cases such as those relating to optimizing the end user's quality of experience COE-102 and network security-103 where I labeled data for training is simply not present and E the real-time nature of the application makes it impractical to wait for feedback. In such cases, unsupervised learning can prove to be an indispensable tool. For example, intrusion detection systems based on auto-encoders have been shown to outperform supervised learning-based systems 104. D. Open problems for pervasive I during early years of 5G standardization, researchers have discussed potentials of AI in achieving high time and spectrum FI Chen C once incorporated in 5G. Specify Kali, AI algorithms can help facilitate the following tasks which would yield low FI Chen C with conventional solutions. Identify network anomalies, allocate network resources, perform network management, among others 106. However, so far these solutions have not been off IC Alley adopted in 5G standards worldwide. In June 2020, the ITU has initiated an AI ML in 5G challenge to motivate researchers to identify and solve real-world problems using AI ML solutions in relevant 5G directions. Point three as such, it is envisioned that such efforts would be factored in later 5G development but will be materialized in a more concrete and pervasive manner in 6G. While pervasive artificial intelligence in wireless communication networks will undoubtedly bring a paradigm shift towards data-oriented approaches, there are still open problems to be resolved. First, thus far no agreement has ever been reached on which algorithms work the best to solve a generalized problem in wireless networks, such as modulation and coding scheme design, channel estimation, and resource allocation, among others. Almost all published works claim significant accuracy or reduced complexity with either analytical theories or practical data sets 107. Additionally, we note the absence of an effective method to draw a fair. 3 https colon slash slash www.itu.in slash n slash a 2-t slash i slash challenge slash 2020 slash pages slash default dot aspx. Volume 8, 2020. 134,007. I. F. Aculdes et al. 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Comparison among all proposed solutions, due to variations in selected data sets, assumptions, evaluation criteria, and so on. However, when it comes to realistic deployments, a careful gleaning process should be performed in order to identify algorithms without loss of general applicability. SECO ND, the limited availability of quality datasets is detrimental to the testing and validation of proposed classify cation or regression algorithms. V, network automation SDN and NFV have been widely recognized as the major paradigm shifts that occurred with the advent of 5G 108. In particular, SDN has paved the way for the separation of the data and control planes, while NFV has been instrumental in decoupling the software from the hardware. Consequently, both wired and wireless networks have witnessed significant benefit TS from the adoption of SDN and NFV, including but not limited to simplify ed network management and SR vice deployment, availability of advanced TRAF IC engineering solutions and FINA grained network slicing techniques, and reduced CAPEX and OPEX. A major contribution of network softwareization has also been the commoditization of key network components such as switches 109 and base Santa tie-ons 110, 111 allowing for their implementation on commercial off-the-shelf COTS hardware. In addition, the large open source community supporting these projects has played a pivotal role in engaging a wider set of stakeholders than was previously possible.
As networks evolve further, the traditional network operations routine, rooted in manual conference iteration and static script-based primitives, cannot keep up with the increasing complexity. Instead, we posit that automation will serve as the major driving force behind building upon the improvements brought forth by SDN and NFV. More specifically, network automation is defined as the process of automating the conference IG duration, management, testing, deployment, and operations of physical and virtual devices within a network 112. Network automation is intended to speed up the delivery of network services while adhering to dynamic and robust service level agreements SLAs, and reducing the potential for errors through minimization of manual intervention. Standardization efforts in this domain have led to the introduction of the Network Data Analytics Function NWDAF, in the Control Plane and the Management Data Analytics Service MDAS, in the Management Plane, for enhanced data collection and analytics functionalities within 3 GPP releases 15 and 16, 113, 114. Both these functions form a critical segment of the service-based architecture SBA, within 5G, highlighting the growing importance of network automation. To this end, we explore three key tenets of network automation in this section software define net programmable data planes, automated service decomposition and orchestration, and self-driving networks. While the FIRST2 are primarily concerned with automating specific IC aspects of the network, i.e., the data plane and the network slicing procedure, self-driving networks are the holy grail of network automation, requiring absolutely no manual intervention. A. Software-defined programmable data planes being the most popular southbound API, OpenFlow 115, is synonymous with SDN and has been featured widely in 5G networks. Yet, the stateless match action abstraction implemented by OpenFlow precludes true data plane programmability since it relies largely on static header FIL matching. Within the context of this paper, we define a data plane programmability as a feature that allows data plane devices, such as switches, to expose their packet processing logic to the control plane in order for it be completely recon FI GERD if required. For example, the controller should be seamlessly able to modify the packet parsing and processing pipeline as required, add support for new protocols, and modify existing ones. To this end, P4116 is being increasingly recognized as the programming language for the data plane. P4 supports a wide variety of hardware ranging from ASICs to commodity CPUs and allows the controller to specify I a packet parser for extracting header FILs and E a collection of match action tables that process these headers. Further, we note that the operation of many applications depends upon the real-time state of the system, and relying on the controller to update the forwarding state each time introduces a significant latency burden. Consequently, there has been a growing body of research that seeks to develop stateful data planes, wherein some of the stateful packet processing and control tasks are off LO added to the data plane switches 117-119. For example, a stateful data plane device may store some form of packet metadata, using it to process new packets belonging to the same FLAO. The general packet forwarding rules are still set by the controller, however, the presence of state information provides context for rule selection at the switch level. Programmable stateful data planes present a variety of interrelated research challenges. First, there is a need for a generic broad-based definition of state, along with abstract tie-ons that expose this state. Second, since packet-level state maintenance will be done by distributed switching devices, there is a need for a state consistency mechanism. A mechanism of this kind could potentially be enforced through the controller to prevent conference electing forwarding actions. Third, security considerations present another important challenge. If the data plane switches are going to perform actions based on packet metadata, a malicious actor could easily use malformed packets to trigger state transitions for example. In this case, ultra-lightweight mechanisms will be needed to verify packet integrity. B. Automated service decomposition and orchestration network slicing allows for the provisioning of differentiated services over the same physical infrastructure, 120, and has been a major research focus in the cellular. 134,008. Volume 8, 2020. I. F. Acuities et al. 6G and beyond. The future of wireless communication systems. Figure 6. Automated Network Slicing Framework, Domain 121-124. However, the slice instantiation and deployment process is largely template-driven and requires manual conference iteration. For example, current 3GPP network slicing specify cation 120 is primarily based on the concept of network slice templates NSTs. 
and NST explicitly defy NES the virtual network functions, VNFs, and associated service function chain that comprise a network S or VICE. Consequently, such network slicing primitives allow for the deployment of a limited set of network services, i.e., only those services for which a template has already been defined. Clearly, an approach of this kind is not scalable because i. it does not provide a mechanism to deal with new kinds of network services, and e. as network services increase in complexity, the effort required to create and maintain templates will become an operational burden. Going beyond the traditional template-driven model, we propose the concept of automated service decomposition and orchestration for network slice automation, as shown in Figure 6. To this end, and in line with 3GPP terminology, we identify three major stakeholders the Communication Service Customers CSCs, the Communication Service Providers CSPs, and the Virtual Infrastructure Service Providers VISPs. The CSCs request Communica tie-on services from CSPs, who instantiate network slices and deploy them over infrastructure owned by VISPs to deliver the requested services. As part of the slice automation work FLAO, the CSCs provide high-level requirements such as those relating to latency, throughput, reliability, etc., along the lines of the emerging intent-based networking paradigm 125. Next, the CSC automatically decomposes the request into a constituent VNF forwarding graph VNFFG. It is important to note here that the service to VNFFG mapping is not a based on a template, but instead makes use of deep learning models to extract service requirements and construct the corresponding VNFFG. The resulting service specifies CVNFFG also contains the resource requirements for the constituent VNFs, allowing for seamless deployment onto the underlying infrastructure. Once the service has been deployed, continuous monitoring and real-time telemetry are used to ensure operational optimality. C. Self-driving networks for decades, the network operator has served as the centerpiece of network operations. However, the increasing complexity of communications networks coupled with the constant state of FLUX brought forth by an ever-increasing number of connected devices has made the task of real-time network management nearly impossible for human operators. Therefore, there is a strong case for transitioning from operator-driven networks to self-driving networks. More specifically, self-driving networks are expected to allow for elastic utilization of resources, error-free operation, prompt and targeted responses to security incidents, and proactive rather than reactive service handling 126, Section 2. Seeking complete automation of network management, a self-driving network is defined as a network where Network measurements are task-driven and tightly integrated with the control of the network, and eight large-scale data analytics and machine learning models are used for network control, as opposed to closed-form models of individual protocols 127. In a nutshell, self-driving networks should be capable of measuring, analyzing, and controlling themselves in an automated manner 128. At the outset, a self-driving network should take a high-level goal or intent as input. Expanding upon the concept of intents, we note that there are broadly two types of intents imperative and declarative. While the former describes in explicit detail how a particular procedure should be carried out, the latter just describes the end goal without specifying how the stated goal should be achieved. For example, reduce network congestion by shifting incoming traffic IC originating at ingress node 1 from load balancer 2 to load balancer 3 inches is an imperative intent since it explicitly defies NES the steps that network must undertake in order to relieve congestion. On the other hand, optimize network operations is a declarative intent. However, a truly declarative intent of the kind described here would be extremely difficult to implement in the near future. Instead, semi-declarative intents that defy name or concrete goals would be far more helpful. Minimize network congestion is one example of such an intent since it tasks the network with optimizing its operation by focusing on a specified IC objective, i.e., minimizing congestion. Based on the intent, the network is expected to Volume 8, 2020 134,009 I, F, Acuities et al., 6G and beyond the future of wireless communication systems. Figure 7. High-level architecture for self-driving networks. Determine I, the measurements that need to be performed, e the corresponding inferences and learning that is required, and e the actions that must be undertaken in response to the input intent. While a formal representation for self-driving networks is yet to be realized, a high-level architecture has been presented in Figure 7, highlighting the importance of large-scale data acquisition, real-time analytics and inference, and programmable data planes. 
However, the realization of self-driving networks brings forth several research challenges as described next. Accurate intent definitions. As discussed previously, good intent definitions must toe the line between imperative and declarative. If the intent is primarily imperative, it defeats the point of automation. On the other hand, if the intent is purely declarative, the automation pro store becomes unnecessarily complex. Therefore, there is a pressing need for formal guidelines that put forward a clear framework for intent definitions. For example, a framework of this kind could take into account customer expectations in terms of throughput and latency, network-wide resource optimization goals, along with other application-specif IC functions and services that are required from the network. Automated real-time inference. Machine learning is vital to the automated decision-making process in self-driving networks. However, previous work in this domain has largely focused on applying pre-existing learning techniques for network control, which are not well suited for network data, given its high volume, distributed nature, and rapid evolution. The major challenge here is the native integration of inference and control algorithms with the network's decision and control fabric. In addition, network design needs to evolve to improve the quality of data that is input to the designed control algorithms 127. Within the domain of self-driving networks, it is widely accepted that quality of data code e, is a prerequisite for quality of service COS 127. In band telemetry, research into in band telemetry int has been largely driven by the need for high quality network monitoring data without introducing additional overhead. The int approach makes use of programmable data planes to encapsulate additional metadata within the data packets themselves 129. Examples of such metadata include switch processing times, buffer occupancy levels, and even specif IC policy rules. As packets traverses the network, they keep accumulating additional metadata, which can be extracted as desired, thus providing highly detailed accurate sets of network data. To this end, there is a need to quantify the impact of INT on network performance 130. In particular, metrics such as the relationship between the amount of metadata and packet size, the additional processing burden introduced, and the accuracy of the measurements obtained are all important parameters that merit careful consideration. 7. 6G Radio Reconfigurable transceiver front ends the massive increase in the number of wirelessly interconnected devices, combined with the ever-growing demand for higher wireless data rates, is leading to an overcrowded electromagnetic M spectrum. To overcome the spectrum scarcity problem and increase the capacity of wireless networks, communication at frequencies beyond RF, i.e., from the MM wave to the THC bands is required. To meet the 134,010, Volume 8, 2020, I, F, Achilles et al., 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Data rate, reliability, and scalability requirements from RF to THC, transformative solutions are needed which include the design, implementation, and optimization of frequency agile, ultra-broadband recon FI durable systems. A system of this kind is able to simultaneously sense and communicate over the full M spectrum, 1 GHz to 10 terahertz, and serves as a major contributor towards the infrastructure needed for the next generation of wireless communications. To realize this vision, pioneering contributions are required in terms of I, new devices that surpass the limits of CMOS technology by leveraging the state-of-the-art in materials science and nanoscale physics, E, heterogeneous integration of such devices which is compatible with the electrical, thermal, and EMI requirements for recon durability and manufacturing scalability, and E, novel all-spectrum dynamic sensing and communication algorithms which maximize the achievable network capacity. The primary goal for 6G radio is to establish dynamic all-spectrum sensing and communication from RF to THC bands, therefore, transforming the way in which wireless devices sense, access, and share the M spectrum. To achieve such a goal, key steps include I, intelligent all-spectrum sensing solutions, E, transceiver hardware design and implementation, and E, spectral and energy FI Chen C optimize ATION as well as resource management. It is worth noting that currently reported works are full FI LLING part of this grand goal by achieving dynamic spectrum sensing or multi-band communications over several frequency bands. It is our hope to motivate advanced solutions to realize all-spectrum communications through this section. A. Dynamic all-spectrum sensing and access in recent times, a concentrated research effort at the physical and link layers has driven exciting progress at RF frequencies for individual cognitive radios CRs. For example, a recently awarded research project by the Research and Innovation Program in the United Kingdom named, 
6G Mitola Radio, aims to establish self-regulating societies for wireless communications with fairness and high FI Chen C.4 This research will facilitate seamless convergence across heterogeneous wireless networks with intelligent decisions made by radios to maximize the quality of experience for end-users. One step further, a major challenge is to develop a Nova Tive spectrum sensing and sensing informed communication and network optimization techniques for dynamic access to all spectral resources. Within this context, the targeted breakthrough would be the development of wireless network aware state inference using all spectrum cartography for cognition over the swath of frequencies from RF to the THC bands, along with cartography constrained algorithms for the FIS ICAL and cross layer control protocols. Artificial intelligence and associated learning algorithms should be investigated for dynamic spectrum sharing with a minimum cost in ukri.org. Grant ref equals EPT 0159851. Ference. The techniques developed should wholly exploit the capabilities of the hybrid front ends, which include a multi-band transceiver design and solutions for resource management. B. Multi-band transceiver design The optimal selection of materials and devices needed to enable all spectrum communications is vital to the success of any multi-band transceiver design. Existing solutions mostly rely on CMOS for multi-band operations, but such an approach only works well in narrow bands. Moreover, solutions based on software DefiNed radios SDRs, have high energy consumption and carbon footprint, consuming several watts in operation 131-132. Instead, novel approaches based on metamaterials, MEMS switches, and even non-electromechanical systems NEMS switches should be sought to implement hybrid front ends figure 8 which are able to simultaneously sense the M spectrum, identify the best available band, and communicate over it at frequencies anywhere from 1 GHz to 10 terahertz. Furthermore, fast-evolving deep learning algorithms serve as an FIC and solution for identifying available spectrum, tuning channels, and adjusting RF power levels. To realize this vision, new techniques in materials and devices, integration and packaging, and spectrum sensing and communication are necessary. At the RF and microwave frequency bands, a combination of low-risk mature CMOS technology, with less mature, potentially transformative technologies, including quantum cascade lasers QCLs, and new plasmonic technologies based on graphene and other 2D materials will be able to provide optimal tunability ties as well as a high-quality factor i.e., the Q factor. The heterogeneous integration of discrete devices into a fully functional front end will require innovation to satisfy material compatibility, ME shielding, thermal dissipation, and scalability requirements. On the other hand, metamaterial and nanomaterials will be deployed at sub-THC and THC bands, based on recent advances in nanotubes and graphene, as well as other single atom thin semiconductors. Space-time frequency coding in metasurfaces will also allow programmable and FINA tunable radio access at MM waves. Optimal control of the front ends requires a Nova Tive all-spectrum sensing, utilization and sharing techniques, new waveform and hierarchical modulation designs to maximize the capacity and distance in ultra-broadband systems, and scalable networking solutions which are able to support the envisioned node density in future cyber-physical systems. The combination of several cutting-edge techniques can help maximize I spectrum utilization toward all spectrum utilization eat data rates toward terabit per second links and eat network user capacity billions of interconnected wireless devices the proposed technology will enable a plethora of applications in the consumer military industrial and medical fils including transformative networking architectures designed to meet the scalability demands in future cyber physical systems volume 8 2020 134011 i f Achilles et al. 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Figure 8. Conceptual design of a hybrid front end for dynamic all-spectrum sensing and communication in 6G. C. Reconfigurable front end scheme accompanying the dynamical spectrum sensing and multi-band operation. Agile front ends should also be equipped with reconfigurability. durability. In terms of hardware design, the plasmonic ref electrase can be deployed in the 3D environment, with a size ranging from 1 mm2 to 100 square millimeters. Depending on the operating frequency, mm wave per terahertz band. Owing to the sub-wavelength size of their elements, the plasmonic ref electrase are able to ref LECT signals in non-conventional ways, which include controlled ref elections in non-specular directions as well as ref elections with polarization conversion 133. 
In order to adapt to dynamic frequency operation, achieve various levels of directivity, and allocate multiple beams, the aperture of plasmonic ref LEC terrain antenna can be controlled mechanically through folding, splitting, or combining in a 3D space. Existing prior art using origami antennas works well in systems using a single metal antenna, as reported in 134.135. However, to achieve Recon FI Gurable Continuous Aperture Antenna Arrays, Plasmonic ref arrays offer a higher degree of freedom with the compactness of unit element distribution. On the other hand, electronically controlled Recon FI Gurable Antenna Arrays are envisioned by leveraging the tunability of plasmonic antennas. In particular, one of the relevant properties of graphene-based plasmonic nano antennas is the possibility to change their resonant frequency by utilizing a small voltage to modify their Fermi energy 136. The possibility to tune an antenna or group of antennas at different frequencies without any mechanical modify cation, as opposed to other multi-band antenna arrays that utilize MEMS or NEMS to create origami-type structures, 137 enables beamforming not only across space but also across frequencies. D. Open problems The biggest hurdle to be overcome lies in the implementation of an integrated ultra-broadband hybrid front-end that is capable of sensing and communication from the RF to the THC bands, over a target distance of a few hundred meters. Meeting this multidisciplinary challenge requires us to I close the THC gap by developing new device technologies, E design and integrate reprogrammable circuitry, interconnects and antennas that can support all spectrum operation, E develop new material integration and packaging techniques to satisfy the electrical, thermal and ME requirements of disparate bands, and IV develop scalable all spectrum communication using the front ends. 8. Ambient backscatter communications in the realm of IoT, sensors are expected to function in various environments with long lasting battery life. Solutions such as Radio Frequency Identify Cation RFID utilize the backscat tear technique to modulate and ref LECTRF signals instead of generating them, which can achieve a significant degree of energy saving. However, existing modulated backscatter solutions have stringent requirements in terms of the proxim ITY between the backscatter transmitter and the RF source, due to the attenuation of the signal over long distances. Besides, the modulated backscatter transmitters are passive, which means that they cannot transmit data without requests initiated by backscatter receivers 138. Furthermore, the issue of self-interference may arise when the backscatter receiver and RF sources are co-located. Hence, in order to achieve better energy efficiency with a higher degree of FLX ability and scalability, new solutions are required in the 6G IoT network. Currently, with more small cells being deployed in outdoor and more access points in indoor environments, the RF signals are covering a wide range of surroundings, and can be considered as a resource to be utilized by secondary radio links without requiring extra power. The system that employs such a technique is called an ambient backscatter communication system. In an ambient backscatter communication system, transmitters can harvest the surrounding and continuous electromagnetic waves radiated by TV towers, base stations, as well as access points, use simple circuits for modulation, and ref LECT them towards receivers. There, 134,012. Volume 8, 2020. I, F, Aculdes et al., 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Figure 9, illustration of backscatter communication systems. Is no need for dedicated spectrum bands for such ambient backscatter transceivers to operate, nor complex electronic components e.g., analog to digital converters to process signals. A. Operation principles of backscatter communications in general, as the name suggests, backscatter communication systems ref LECT signals impinged on a backscatter transmitter in the direction of the signal's origin, and since it is not a perfect specular ref L action, the signals are scattered within a certain angular range of the environment. A backscatter communication receiver within the range can thus pick up the signals. In particular, backscatter communications have three variations in terms of architecture, which are monostatic, bistatic, and ambient backscatter communications, respectively. Here we brief LY explain the FIRST two types and then focus on the last one. As the most commonly adopted backscatter communication approach with widely used RFID applications, monostatic backscatter communication systems have the simplest setup, which consists of a backscatter transmitter and a reader. The reader has both an RF signal source and a backscat tear receiver embedded with a switch to change the operation mode. Once the receiver sends out a request, 
The RF source activates the backscatter transmitter, which then modulates an ref LECTS the M waves impinged on it back to the receiver, as shown in Figure 9. Such a design is mainly used for short-range RFID applications 138. Nonetheless, two drawbacks of the monostatic backscatter communication architecture are i the reader cannot perform full duplex communication due to the switch mechanism, and e the signals experience round-trip path loss being sent from the reader to the transmitter and then ref elected back to the reader. On the contrary, in the bistatic backscatter communicat ion architecture, the RF source and receiver are SEPA rated, as shown in Figure 9, which provides higher FLX ability in the spatial domain. With multiple RF sources and backscatter transmitters well placed, the serving range can be remarkably extended compared to the monostatic backscatter scenario. Despite this improvement, it is more costly for bistatic backscatter communication systems to operate in real. Networks, since they require RF sources and transmitters to be well placed so as to achieve desired performance, and most of the times this condition can be difficult to satisfy, especially in a sophisticated network environment, such as an indoor off ICE or dense urban scenarios. B. Mechanism of ambient backscatter communications different from the monostatic backscatter device where the transmitting and receiving components are separately located and the RF source is co-located with the receiver, devices of ambient backscatter communication systems consist of both the transmitter and receiver. Additionally, distinct from bistatic backscatter communications, ambient backscatter communications do not require dedicated RF sources to provide exclusive services, which can reduce infrastructure and maintenance expenditure significantly. Therefore, the ambient backscatter communications provide the most energy FIC and solution for sensors in the IoT network in 6G. Specify Cali, in one proof-of-concept study for utilizing the always-on radio signals for ambient backscatter communications reported in 139 TV signals serve as the RF source, which can be amplitude and sometimes frequency division modulated. In the ambient backscatter transmitter design, a simple switch consisting of a transistor and connected to the antenna can be used to modulate the impedance of the antenna. A mismatch of impedance indicates a ref election mode of the impinging signals, whereas a matched impedance allows for the signal being absorbed by the antenna 139. The power consumption of such one-bit modulation of signals is minimal. At the receiver side, by demodulating the received sequence of 1 inch and 0 inches, signals can be successfully recovered. However, it is worth noting that since the ref elected signals from the ambient environment already contain encoded information from the RF source system, e.g., cellular or TV networks, the receiver design should take into consideration how to extract the backscattered signals from the mixture. Besides the simplicity in transceiver implementation, ambient backscatter communications are not restricted to a single band operation. In fact, the ambient backscatter transceivers can operate in the wide range of super high. Volume 8. 2020. 134,013. I. F. Achilles et al. 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Figure 10. Illustration of the IOST 140. Frequency SHF bands, covering Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, and other bands 138. C. Open problems in ambient backscatter communications. Spectral and energy FIHNC. Currently, the research and development of ambient backscatter communications is still in its infancy. As mentioned before, careful planning of backscatter devices is crucial for achieving good performance. Due to the randomness in IoT device deployment, current solutions fall behind in terms of the targeted spectral FIHNC. Specify Cali, the randomly located IoT devices should utilize ambient backscatter links to achieve a satisfying throughput while maintaining an extended transmission distance. Addition Ally, even though individual backscatter communication devices demonstrate good energy performance, an IoT network comprising hundreds or even thousands of such devices might still require optimization of energy FIHNC on a system level. Protocol Design Existing ambient backscatter communication systems are mostly used for dedicated application specify C purposes, and thus lack good compatibility with other wireless communication systems. Standardization and protocol design are necessary to formalize the key operation and management aspects of ambient backscatter communications, such as packet size, routing protocols, among others. X. Internet of Space Things with CubeSats and UAVs The Internet of Space Things IOST is a spatial expansion of the Internet of Things which primarily focuses on terrestrial use cases. For future communication networks, this expansion is necessary for the following reasons, i.e. IoT. 
relies heavily on existing infrastructure and hence lacks FLX ability as well as scalability. E global coverage is impossible using traditional IoT solutions, especially in remote areas including the North and South Poles, due to the imbalance of construction expenditure and service revenue, and E limited heterogeneity and spectrum resources in the IoT network. To this end, IOST is envisioned as a ubiquitous cyber-physical system spanning ground, air, and space, with applications in monitoring and reconnaissance, in space backhauling, and holistic data integration 140. More specifically, as shown in Figure 10, IOST consists of the ground station, customer premises, and on-Earth sensing devices which form the ground segment, and the CubeSats, UAVs, and near-Earth sensing devices that form the space segment. The ground to satellite links GSLs connect the IOST hubs with CubeSats to exchange requests and data, and the inter-satellite links ISLs relay information to neighboring CubeSats, in both the same orbit as well as adjacent orbits. Further, the UAVs establish links with each other, as well as sensors and CubeSats to form a localized data aggregation layer. To this end, we note that UAVs are expected to feature heavily in the upcoming 3 GPP releases 16 and 17 142. Further, since the space segment forms a vital component of the system, research relating to the development of small satellites, or CubeSats 143, for use within IOST is of critical importance 140. CubeSats are a set of miniaturized satellites with sizes. Ranging from 1U to 6U, A, U, is 10 times 10 times 10 centimeters. 3. Currently, CubeSats are being deployed for a variety of applications including Earth Sensing, 144 Positioning, and IoT and Machine-to-Machine -machine Communications. Compared to traditional LEO satellites, CubeSats present a number of advantages relating to height lower costs and shorter. 134,014. Volume 8, 2020. I. F. Achilles et al. 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Figure 11. Conceptual design of a next-generation CubeSat 141. Development cycles and eat higher FLX ability and scalable ITY 141. Normally the development cycles range from 3 to 7 years for traditional LEO and GEO satellites and the costs are extremely high. Also, since the payloads are predetermined in the LEO and GEO satellites from the period of development until deployment, it is difficult to reconnect IGER any component in the middle of the process. However, CubeSat's development can be done in a remarkably shorter time using COTS components with much lower costs. This also guarantees that CubeSats are easily recon FIG durable. To this end, we have recently proposed a new next-generation CubeSat. Hardware concept is shown in Figure 11, 141. The proposed CubeSat design includes an all-new communication subsystem for seamless operation in a wide variety of frequency bands. More specifically, the novelty of our design concept is characterized by the presence of multi-band transceivers and antennas that are able to support wireless communications at microwave, MM wave, and THC frequencies as detailed in the following section. Through this unique CubeSat design, we can potentially achieve data rates in excess of 100 gigabits per second 141. A. Multi-band communication subsystem The primary motivation for a multi-band communication subsystem comes from the fact that existing CubeSats have limited communications capabilities, largely relying on spectrum ranging from the L1-2 GHz till the COT 26.5-40 GHz band. There are two major drawbacks associated with this approach. First, the traditional frequency bands are becoming increasingly prone to congestion 145. Second, the TBP's level throughput required by IOST cannot be achieved with existing frequency bands. To overcome the spectrum scarcity and capacity limitations in current satellite networks, we have proposed the use of multiple frequency bands from RF to THC spectrum in IOST 141. The use of such frequencies has been made possible by advances in high-frequency device development 26146. More specifically, as part of the multi-band communica tie-on subsystem, we have developed both multi-frequency transceivers as well as antenna systems, as described next. As shown in Figure 12, in our proposed multi-band transceiver, we use two complementary approaches, namely, an electronic frequency up-converting chain and an optical frequency down-converting chain, to generate signals at different frequencies. With regard to the electronics-based approach, the primary idea is to use frequency splitters in order to extract the intermediate frequencies for outputs. For example, as shown in Figure 12, 
The signal at frequency F1 is considered as the intermediate output when producing signals at a higher frequency F2. On the other hand, the photonics-based approach involves the down conversion of optical signals. As shown in figure 12, multi-band signals are generated by heterodyning two input signals with a mock zender modulator. The resulting RF signal has a frequency equal to the difference between the two inputs. The generated signal, along with the two input signals, serves as the FI null output. Distinct from the commonly used up conversion and down conversion techniques where intermediate frequency products are abandoned, our approach harvests them and utilizes them as part of the multi-band communication SYS-TEM. These multi-band frequencies can be assigned to the GSLs and ISLs dynamically to accommodate various service requirements. To this end, within IOST, the GSLs make use of the more robust microwave and MM wave frequencies, while high-capacity THC links form the ISLs. In addition to multi-band transceivers, CubeSats in the IOST are also equipped with multi-frequency antenna SYS TEMs. In particular, as discussed in Section 3, the use of THC links allows for very large antenna arrays that serve as the basis for massive MIMO and UM MIMO communication schemes. More specifically, we note that there exist multiple options when it comes to the design of multi-band antenna arrays. The FIRST approach involves the use of NEMS, MEMS, and origami structures to create physically reconference iGurable antennas, wherein the size of the radiating elements can be changed physically with a view to adjust their resonant frequency. On the other hand, the second approach proposes the use of materials such as graphene to create electronically tunable nano antenna arrays 147-148. In this case, the resonant frequency can be controlled by modulating the graphene Fermi energy or chemical potential. This allows for tuning of the antenna to resonate at different frequencies without physically changing its size, in contrast to the MEMS-based approach. B. System constellation design within the context of IOST, an ideal constellation design is crucial to achieve true global coverage and satisfactory link performance. However, conventional LEO constellations are typically characterized by the presence of fewer than 100 satellites, for example, the CubeSat-based IoT system, Astrocast, has a maximum of 64 satellites 149. Volume 8, 2020. 134,015. I. F. Aculdes et al. 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communications systems. Figure 12. The proposed all-spectrum signal front-end designs 141. At the outset, the coverage and connectivity offered by such systems leaves much to be desired. Motivated by the need for improved coverage, reliable connectivity, and increased redundancy, mega-constellations of several hundred satellites have gained significant traction over the past year 150. Mega-constellations provide several advantages over trade tonal constellations including but not limited to increased coverage density, improved connectivity, and higher redundancy. More specifically, constellation design typically involves solving for several interrelated parameters such as I the apogee and perigee radii, E the orbital eccentricity, E the number of cubesats per orbital plane, IV the number of orbital planes, and V the initial longitude of the ascending node, argument of perigee, and true anomaly of the cubesats. While a fairly challenging problem in itself, the presence of an extremely large number of satellites further serves to complicate the system design. Consequently, the existing state-of-the-art constellation design frameworks are largely geared towards the design of systems with a few dozen satellites at best. To this end, we have proposed a highly scalable and customizable constellation design framework that takes into consideration both coverage and connectivity parameters 151. Through the use of novel metrics such as Sfer ical voronoi tessellation based coverage characterization and ISL feasibility-based connectivity parameters, we are able to demonstrate that the resulting IOST constellation achieves a performance level that is similar to existing state-of-the-art mega-constellations such as Starlink, while requiring only a quarter, i.e., less than 500, of the satellite's 151. C. Network management IOST encompasses a vast infrastructure spanning both the Earth as well as space. A complex network of this kind has much to benefit IT from FI grained real-time control that is well suited for tackling the peculiarities of the space environment, namely temporal topological variation and long delays. Going beyond the traditional bent pipe nature of satellite communication systems, IOST makes extensive use of SDN and NFV to significantly improve network resource utilization, simplify network management, and reduce operating costs 140. 
In a manner similar to the infrastructure as a service IAAS paradigm, IOST intends to deliver CubeSats as a service, with promising results as shown in 140. In particular, we have demonstrated that through the use of SDN, it is possible to achieve sub-second end-to-end latent size. More specifically with the domain of network management, IOST introduces the novel concepts of virtual CSI, VCSI, for joint optimal physical link layer resource allocation, and stateful segment routing, SSR, for overcoming challenges associated with the high latency space segment. In particular, concerning the latter, IOST extends the traditional SDN paradigm by including support for state-based packet forwarding that takes into account the topological conference iteration of the network at any given instance of time, while the use of segment routing helps in the minimization of control traf IC, in addition to a higher level of demand satisfaction and load balancing as demonstrated in 152. For fair, IOST also employs predictive algorithms to preemptively detect GSL outage events, which when coupled with gateway diversity result in the realization of proactive handovers that minimize handover interruption time. In addition, IOST proposes the use of contains oration 153 in CubeSats for achieving lightweight hardware virtualization without significant overhead. Going forward, we note that the aforementioned techniques will play a vital role in the realization of pervasive cyber-physical systems of this kind. X. Cell-free massive MIMO communications in 5G wireless networks. Massive MIMO communications have been tested and deployed at base stations BSs, which are equipped with more than 100 antenna elements to increase the antenna array gain and take advantage of the diversity gain. A related concept is network MIMO, which, instead of packing more than 100 antenna elements at a single BS, forms a coordinated framework consisting of multiple BSs, each with multiple antennas. A coordination scheme of this kind can achieve spatial diversity by allowing a single user to be served by more than one BS at the same time, overcoming the disadvantage of bad channel conditions if only one BS is connected to the user, and eliminates inter-cell interference 154. However, a detailed comparative study has shown that massive MIMO communication schemes outperform network MIMO with respect to end-user received signal strength and overall costs in conference iteration 155. Going one step further, in order to effectively eliminate intercell interference caused by users located at cell. 134,016. Volume 8, 2020. I. F. Achilles et al. 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Figure 13. Cell-free massive MIMO in comparison with classic massive MIMO. Boundaries, based on the ideas of distributed MIMO communications and coordinated multi-point comp communications, researchers have proposed the concept of cell-free massive MIMO communication. In a scheme of this kind, the originally densely packed antenna array set with a few hundred elements at the BS is distributed in a fairly large area in the form of smaller sets with fewer than 10 antenna elements, while still serving a similar number of users in the same area 156. As shown in Figure 13, the main difference between cell-free and classic massive MIMO communication systems is that instead of associating each user terminal to a cell with a BS equipped with a large number of antenna elements, it relaxes the restriction of cell boundaries, which can significantly reduce or even eliminate the inter-cell interference. Without cell boundaries, all BSs, or a subset of BSs, can serve users simultaneously in a coordinated manner. In coordination, the cell-free massive MIMO BSs can share with each other the data to be sent to users through frontal links. It has been shown that the BSs can use their local channel state information CSI, to achieve satisfactory performance and avoid the excessive computation complexity associated with sharing global channel conditions with all BSs 157. The local CSI can be estimated in the uplink channel in a time division duplex TDD mode. Then, precoding is performed based on the obtained channel information at the BSs, before data transmission in the downlink channel. The transmit power and precoding vector can be determined based on the geographic proximity of users to the BSs. Compared to the small cell architecture in 5G, which consists of non-cooperative base stations that can serve up to 100 users per cell with a smaller area e.g., up to a 200 meter cell radius and reduced power in signal transmission e.g., up to 10 watts a cell-free massive MIMO communication system achieves significantly better performance, since each user can be served by a dedicated access. Point. A reported study in 158 has demonstrated that the cell-free massive MIMO scheme improves 95% likely per user throughput by FIVA times and by 10 times under correlated shadow fading, with respect to the small cell solution.
More specifically, the same study has reported that when considering realistic channel conditions, including pilot contamination and imperfect CSI, cell-free massive MIMO systems demonstrate much higher throughput compared to small cells and, more importantly, are more robust to impacts such as shadow fading, non-coherence interference, as well as noise 158. However, we also note the following challenges. I, due to the issue of aliasing, channel estimation for signals received by different antenna elements is more complicated compared to that of ordinary massive MIMO communications, E with the significantly increased synthesized aperture size, the range of near FIL propagation grows larger, hence requiring a different channel model for characterizing the large and small scale channel parameters. A. Channel characteristics of cell-free massive MIMO communication systems It has been theoretically proven that as the number of antenna elements approaches INFINITY, adversarial channel effects, including intercell interference, small-scale fading, and OTHERS, will disappear 159. In cell-free massive MIMO communications, such effects will also have a negligible impact on propagation channels. Specify Cali, channels under a coordinated scheme of this kind will satisfy the conditions of favorable propagation 160. Favorable propagation condi tions imply that the channel vectors between the BSs and UEs are orthogonal, so that the sum rate can be maximized. This characteristic is most prominent in classic massive MIMO communications 161. In cell-free massive MIMO systems, it has been shown that favorable propagation conditions can be achieved given that the number of APs is fairly large, with an approximate density of 1,000 per kilometer 2. Volume 8, 2020. 134,017. I. F. Aculdes et al. 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. B. Open problems in cell-free massive MIMO communications as the domain of cell-free massive MIMO communications is relatively new, there are several open problems that merit further investigation. Among them, we posit that coordination and optimization challenges will critically affect the entire system performance and future deployments. User scheduling. Extensive studies have been conducted on channel characterization and capacity analysis. However, the prior art does not take into consideration scenarios involving networks with a large number of users to serve. In such cases, there might be an upper bound for the number of APs to serve a user in order to maintain an acceptable level of average throughput. Current works assume that all users will be served simultaneously under the same frequency resource block. However, when the number of users grows to a threshold where they can no longer be served at the same time, a scheduling scheme that achieves fairness should be considered. Location optimization of APs. Existing works in cellular networks draw heavily upon stochastic geometry where cell structures follow 2D Voronoi tessellation and geographically separated BSs that serve cell edge users under the coordinated multipoint comp scheme to improve overall system efficiency and overcome intercell interference through scheduling 162-163. It is therefore crucial to optimize the placement of BSs under practical link level constraints such as signal to interference ratio as well as success probability for individual links to enhance network fairness 164. In cell-free massive MIMO, since no cell boundaries are assumed, system level performance pertaining to locations of APs, random scatterers, as well as users should be thoroughly investigated and optimized. 11. Technologies for beyond 6G thus far. We have presented in great detail the key drivers that are expected to play an integral role in the next generation of wireless networks. However, in addition to these, we also note the presence of several promising early stage technologies that are tipped to revolutionize how we perceive data communications in the near future. To this end, in this section, we discuss three such promising paradigms, namely, the Internet of Nano Things, Internet of Bio Nano Things, and Quantum Communications. A. Internet of Nano Things In addition to the need for more spectrum resources to accommodate a plethora of wireless devices and services, a variety of transformative wireless communication scenarios are also envisioned to become a reality in the near future. In particular, with the advent of wireless ubiquity, we note the existence of situations where electromagnetic waves do not yield acceptable performance or lack reachability due to hardware. Limitations, such as in high salinity water or intravascular channels where the transmission range can be extremely short. In the aforementioned application scenarios for THZ band communications, as the frequencies of operation increase, the wavelengths of signals fall into the nanometer range, i.e., 10 minus 9 to 10 minus 7 meter in size thereby motivating studies on nano network communications 165 166 
Different from those operating at lower frequencies in the microwave range, the devices and transceivers used in the Internet of Nano Things I owned are in the scale of nanometers and thus behave differently from classical wireless communication systems. Given the much smaller size, each nano thing consumes much less energy and is envisioned to be self-powered, e.g., via vibrational energy harvesting using piezoelectric nano generators 167. Besides conducting signal transmission tasks, the nano things can also perform basic processing and data storage, as well as enabling new nano sensing capabilities with higher sensitivity. Current advancements in nano technologies provide several promising candidate materials with various dimensions for creating such nano machines, including a thin strip of graphene named graphene nanorib bonds, graphene in form of a three-dimensional 3D roll named carbon nanotubes, and graphene spheres. Communications in the paradigm of nano networks mainly falls under two categories, which are I encoded signal bits being carried with molecules, which follows a diffusion based mechanism elaborated in section 11b1 and E plasmonic radiation on metamaterial based antennas including graphene and carbon nanotubes operating in the THC band. These plasmonic antennas 136, 168, 170 leverage the physics of surface plasmon polarite and SPP waves i.e., conference inet M waves resulting from the global oscillations of electrons at the interface of a conductor made real in a dielectric material, to FIC and radiate at the target resonant frequency while being much smaller than the corresponding wavelength. This property allows them to be integrated in very dense arrays, beyond traditional antenna arrays. The ratio between the free space wavelength lambda and the SPP wavelength lambda SPP is known as the plasmonic conference I Neman factor, and depends on the plasmonic material properties and the operation frequency. The higher the conference I Neman factor, the smaller the antennas and the higher the density in which they can be integrated. One essential components in the ion similar to traditional communication networks, several key components are seen in ion 171. Nano nodes are the basic functional units in the nano network, and have sizes ranging from 1 to 100 nanometers, and can form a cluster to forward and receive signals. A typical nano node with full transceiving capability contains the following elements. A nano antenna and a plasmonic nano transceiver based on graphene advancements to propagate SPP waves. 134,018. Volume 8, 2020. I. F. Aculdes et al. 6G and beyond. The future of wireless communication systems. A nanoprocessor with operating frequency close to 1 terahertz, nano actuators, nano sensors which can sense external force, gas molecules, and biological objects such as antigens and antibodies, a nano memory which allows storage of a bit signal in a single atom, a nano battery, and an energy nano harvester which transfers energy to power other elements 172. Limited by the computation capabilities and battery life, the signals are mostly pulse-based for the easiness of detection and transmission. Nano routers control the behavioral patterns of the nano nodes, aggregate information, and determine the optimal paths for signals to be forwarded. The nano routers are equipped with higher energy and computational resources. When a specif IC query is created from the command center, nano routers need to select the optimal routes that can reach the nano nodes to collect their data and report back. Due to the limited transmission range, a pulse-based signaling is preferred to assess the reachable range of nano nodes in order to minimize outage probability and establish the desired routes. Gateways serve as the remote controller of the IONED and connect over the internet to service providers. The gateways can be common smart devices such as smartphones and tablets, among others. In order to achieve a manageable network with hundred or even thousands of nano nodes dissipated in sophisticated communication environments, Gateways should devise a holistic approach in disseminating commands and queries, coordinating between possible collisions, and processing noisy data, which requires a drastically different network framework than the conventional network architecture. Based on the arbitrary pattern of the nano nodes, potent TL solutions can be found with the assistance of artificial intelligence, which does not require pre-established model for prediction. It is worth noting that major device technology in the IONED is still under design and development, Although a few types of individual components, such as nano sensors, have been made available, it is estimated that a major paradigm shift for the IONED is expected to occur in the second half of the 2020s. Two applications of the IONED in the realm of IONED, applications can be primarily found in body area networks and short distance local environments. Three typical application scenarios are described as follows, also illustrated in Figure 14. Nano cameras. The nano cameras are based on nano photo sensing and nanotechnology to sense, 
combine, and process light signals before transforming them into electric signals. This system includes nano photodectors, nano lens, nano batteries, and nano memories in order to achieve FINA resolution eye mogging and signal processing. The nano cameras can be Figure 14, Application Scenarios of Molecular Communications in IOND and IOBNT Applied to a wide range of scenarios including but not limited to intravascular imaging and fracture detection in oil pipelines 171. On-chip networks, with microchips getting more compact in dimension while the complexity of functionality grows, on-chip signal transmission has become SIG-NIFI cantly more challenging. Currently, issues relating to CPU scalability and FIC and memory synchronization have driven research trends towards wireless network on-chip WNOC solutions, which can replace wired connections on conventional chips and take advantage of short-range communication in the nano network at THZ band frequencies 173. Nano robots for IONED. The nano robots in nano networks can be deployed in environments such as nuclear power plants and oil pipelines which might be hazardous for humans to perform tasks but require high precision and do not allow massive drilling or digging over existing infrastructure. Under these circumstances, nano robots can be dissipated to sense and collect data relating to chemical concentration and FLUID speed, among others. By forming ad hoc networks, the nano robots can aggregate and forward data packets to gateways in the IONED. Nano robots are also being widely researched in biomedical engineering FILs. To this end, Section 11B will delve into nano robots for healthcare applications. Three open problems in the ION the significant size shrinkage brings three major challenges. The FIRST1 is power efficiency optimization. Even though nano devices consume power at the level of microwatts when transmitting femtosecond long pulses in order to cover in. Volume 8, 2020. 134,019. I. F. Aculties et al. 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Area of a few square meters such as an off ICE or a meeting room, the energy consumption factors in is a major constraint in maintaining a satisfying overall network performance. New designs on duty cycles for nano transceivers should be proposed and evaluated, as well as new clustering algorithms in order to group nano transceivers in close proximity for adaptive operations. The second open issue is interference control, which has been extensively studied in classic wireless network CNR IOS. However, the conventional approaches cannot be directly applied to the ion realm, due to the higher density of nanotransceivers in space and pulse-based signal transmiss scion schemes. Self-interference becomes the most prominent issue for nanotransceivers when full duplex mode is deployed and hence requires novel scheduling algorithms to mitigate this adversarial effect. Additionally, new modulation and coding schemes should be developed to FIT the need of nano devices on spectral and power efficiency while maintaining a low probability of crosstalk among links. The third challenge resides in the network protocols. Since the ION will foreseeably function in a manner that is drastically different from the IoT due to differences in channel conditions, limited scale of operation, as well as miniaturized devices, the protocol stack design still remains an open FIL for exploration. B. Internet of Bio Nano Things for Health Applications Highly Relevant to IOWNED, with its unique characteristics and applications, is the concept of the Internet of Bio Nano Things IOBNT. First introduced in 2015, the IOBNT has garnered significant traction in its efforts to synergistically combine telecommunications with healthcare solutions 174. The IOBNT is a network of molecules which can communicate with each other. The types of molecular communications include artificial cells which act as gateways to translate between different molecule types, or a bio-cyber interface which can convert molecular signals to electrical ones and transmit to external devices for further processing 175. In applications relating to human healthcare, the IOBNT harbors many unique challenges and opportunities. First, the interdisciplinary research on both communications and data analytics can greatly facilitate the modeling of biological processes, including cancer cell formations and Alzheimer's disease, and further design effective control measures for such diseases. Second, even though expressions of genetic codes at the cell and organ level can vary remarkably, in a manner analogous to various types of data applications in wireless networks, communication models can be developed and exploited to conceive a generally applicable health information framework. Third, 
The holistic network architecture envisioned in the IOBNT will integrate components at heterogeneous levels including within cells and among tissues, organs, as well as systems, before eventually connecting to the outside internet for physicians to perform metric evaluations and propose treatment plans accordingly. However, healthcare solutions that are to be realized in such complicated biological and molecular environments should be built upon a solid understanding of the physics behind molecular communication and advanced statistical analysis tools in order to unveil the principles behind the seemingly random molecular movement. 1. Essential communication models in IOBNT different from classic wireless communication channels based on the propagation of electromagnetic waves. Molecular communication MC channels rely on the mechanism of molecular movement to transmit information. The main difference between an MC channel and the classical wireless channel is that the transmission medium presents different forms, such as FLUids of several chemical compositions in blood vessels, plasma membranes of neurons, and so on. Based on the motion of molecules in such diverse mediums, end-to-end -end channel models have been developed to characterize the capacity, noise, and interference in various communication scenarios 176-178. Particularly, in the diffusion-based MC model, information is encoded in various forms, for example, based on different concentration intensities and distinct release times of molecules. The nano device acting as a transmitter emits such encoded molecules to the wireless molecular channel. At the receiver side, another nano device decodes the signals based on the quantified received intensities or times of arrival, given that the channel remains stationary for the duration of transmission. In such transmissions, some molecules will get dispersed in the channel and will not be received by the target nano devices, they are hence treated as noise, and channels with such residual molecules are characterized as channels with memory. For such channels, the theories of fixed diffusion and particle location displacement are used to characterize the channel capacity as a function of a collection of parameters, including the diffusion coefficient of the channel, the temperature, the distance between end transceivers, and the bandwidth of the transmitted signal 178. 2. IOBNT in public health applications Late 2019 and 2020 have seen the novel coronavirus disease named COVID-19 spread worldwide, causing high fatalities and a plethora of other public health issues. More generally, such outbreaks, including the Severe Acute Respiratory Syndrome SARS, in 2002, the Middle East Respiratory Syndrome MERS in 2012, the Ebola virus disease in 2014, and the seasonal INFLUNZA, raise questions about the manner in which public health systems should react to such epidemics and pandemics. The widespread havoc caused by pandemics calls for effective means to identify new viruses, understand their mechanisms of viral infection, and devise FIC and tools for treatment and vaccination. In order to facilitate the development of antiviral and preventive solutions, researchers have looked into creating biosensors that can monitor the cleavage of proteases within infected cells 179. Proteases are generated as a result of the 134,020, Volume 8, 2020, I, F. Aculdes et al. 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Cell being infected by the genome of coronavirus, which is a type of RNA virus. Other byproducts include synthesized polyproteins which can replicate and transcript to generate more RNAs, and structural proteins that can construct new virions 180. Two types of proteases found in the coronaviruses that cause SARS and MERS i.e., SARS-CoV and MERS-CoV are papain-like protease and 3C-like protease. The biosensor, which is based on luciferase, is used to identify potential broad-spectrum coronavirus papain-like or 3C-like protease inhibitors. The SARS-CoV-2 virions that cause the COVID-19 disease have a diameter of 50 to 200 nanometers approximately, 181, and infect the human respiratory system via human-to-human -human spread, in the form of droplets discharged when an infected person coughs or sneezes 182. COVID-19 has thus far posed unprecedented challenges worldwide in testing, treatment, and vaccine development. The IOBNT is envisioned to have immense potential in the molecular diagnosis of emerging viruses of this kind. The nanosensors, which can be fi ref ly luciferase-based or other reporter genes, can be used to examine the reverse transcription polymerase chain reaction in collected samples. Other tests include using bio-nano sensors to identify antibodies from blood samples to examine if the person is infected. In terms of treatment, although no antiviral drugs are available for COVID-19 yet, studies on INFL UNSA treatment can shed light on how the IOBNT could assist in future solution development. 
A critical step for treatment is the antiviral intervention, which blocks the intracellular signaling pathways to prevent INFL unes of viruses from replication. A reported solution preventing the virus from replication is to use engineered bacteria, i.e., Escherichia coli, to trap the Ebola virus 183. In the reported work, the blood of a patient with the Ebola virus infection is transmitted to a Mycroft LUIDIC chamber tube outside the body which contains the engineered bacteria. The scattered bacteria can then achieve protein binding with the Ebola virus using chemical bind force and synthetic protein binding receptors 183. More importantly, the IOBNT serves a unique role as a holistic solution to not only monitor limited types of cells, e.g., squamous epithelial cells from nasopharyngeal swabs for COVID-19 tests but also across different tissues and systems. It is found that such coronaviruses can also cause damage to digestive and neurological systems, 181-184. Hence, a series of connected bio-nano things consisting of various types of engineered bacteria can operate simultaneously to improve test reliability and treatment efficiency. 3. Artificial Intelligence in IOBNT for Health Applications in the IOBNT Network Different systems demonstrate a wide variation in characteristics, thereby requiring varied analytical approaches. For example, in cardiovascular systems, the speed of molecular transmission is determined by the speed of blood FL and heart rate among other factors, which may vary per person, whereas in the nervous system. The time required to propagate information carrying electrochemical stimuli through neurons depends on the connective ITY of synapses. In order to estimate the error rate and capacity, the existing diffusion-based MC model normally requires several channel parameters to formulate the model for computation. The generic modeling approach provides initial insights into the behavior of molecular signal transmission, however, recent advances in statistical learning, that utilize artificial intelligence, provide increasingly refined solutions for modeling sophisticated molecular information exchange processes. For example, in 77, a signal detection algorithm based on neural networks has been shown to achieve good performance without prior knowledge of the molecular channel thus lending support to the use of statistical inference for characterizing molecular communication channels. Furthermore, a neural network-based nano-receiver design has been proposed in 185, which shows good bit error rate performance under the effect of inter-symbol interference. Four open problems for IOBNT currently. IOBNT primarily focuses on studies in the domains of physical layer channel modeling, capacity analysis, modulation and coding schemes, and nanotransceiver design. However, research gaps relating to the following aspects need to be overcome. Experimental validation. The theoretical models of molecular communications should be validated under realistic channel environments, which include experimental testing. Traditionally, these experimental tests have posed high requirements on lab equipment and the nurturing process of cells and bacteria. While the proster is for such experiments should be strictly followed and executed, at times the cost for testing can be remarkably high. In such situations, simulations based on realistic assumptions serve as an alternative means, which have been commonly adopted in research. The convergence between analytical and experimental approaches should be a joint effort by researchers across FILs in telecommunications, biomedical engineering, and signal processing. Data storage and management. The large data sets obtained from experiments or simulations can have many control variables which require efforts to manage and update. Open databases have become a popular trend for sharing raw data to benefit the entire research community for collaboration, and can be a foreseeable direction for research in the IOBNT. C. Quantum communications as networks continue to evolve beyond 6G, they are expected to incorporate more spectrum, a larger variety of transceiver front ends, higher complexity in processed signals, and stricter requirement on reliability, and therefore, it is expected that the computational requirements of wireless systems will also increase 186. To this end, quantum computing has. Volume 8, 2020. 134,021. I. F. Achilles et al. 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems been widely recognized as a key enabling technology for realizing computationally complex systems 187. Quantum systems are particularly useful for solving complex optimized on problems. For example, in the optimal routing problem with multiple objectives, traditional methods, including the geographic routing algorithm, demonstrate significant complexities to yield optimal solutions, and less complex ones often sacrifice CE optimality 188. 
It has been demonstrated that using quantum computing for such problems can efficiently reduce complexity while achieving optimality. 189. However, such computationally intensive tasks often require several hundreds of thousands or millions of interconnected quantum bits, and therefore cannot be performed on a single quantum chip. The need for interconnecting several chips of this kind has given rise to the concept of quantum communications. Quantum communications is thus indispensable for operating quantum systems at scale 190. More specifically, quantum communications is defined as the exchange of information that adheres to the laws of quantum mechanics, and offers several key advantages, like the capability of large-scale parallel computation, e the ability to transfer data in a tamper-proof manner, and e the potential to encode and transmit a large number of multiple data streams simultaneously. We begin our discussion of quantum communications by describing the following four postulates or rules that govern the operation of such systems 191. Postulate 1 The quantum bit. Within the context of classical communications, a binary value of either 0 or 1 per bit is used to represent data. On the other hand, in quantum communications, the quantum bit, or qubit, contains the superposition of both logical values at the same time, of the form. 8i equals a 0, 0i zero plus a 1, 1i. One, 1, where 8i represents a two-dimensional vector, with a Coefficients a 0 and a 1 being complex numbers, and 0 and 1 being the two logical values. Postulate 2 The quantum register. Just like computing registers that are used to store multiple bits, quantum registers are used for storing qubits. However, unlike classical registers that are deterministic, the output of a quantum register is probabilistic, i.e., when reading or measuring the quantum register, a different value may be returned each time, thus presenting a major challenge in the implementation of quantum information exchange systems. Postulate 3 Exponential Speed Up Exponential speed up is a key property of quantum information processing systems. We know that classical systems employ parallelization wherein multiple computing units process parallel streams of data simultaneously. On the other hand, in quantum systems, the entire input information is placed in a single quantum register, and a single quantum computing unit can process multiple register states simultaneously, thus achieving a significant reduction in the time required for computation. Postulate for the QC conversion. Since it is far easier to perceive information in terms of zeros and ones, i.e., classical information, it becomes imperative to interpret the results of any quantum operation in the classical domain. To this end, the classical interpretation of one implies that, if we were to measure such a qubit, we would receive value zero with probability p0 equals a zero. Two and value one with p1 equals a one. Two, closely related to the four postulates is the concept of entanglement 191. Entanglement is a phenomenon in which the quantum states of two or more particles are described with reference to each other. Within this context, these particles exist in a shared state, and are referred to as entangled pairs. Any action on a particle within the entangled pair immediately affects all other particles within that pair, irrespective of the physical separation between them. For example, if a photon traveling through an optical FI beer is entangled with another photon outside the FI beer, the photon inside the FI beer will experience the same effects as those experienced by the photon on the outside. In this case, entanglement serves as a source of noise in the quantum channel. Continuing our discussion of quantum channels, we note that classical information theory does not apply to these channels. Unlike traditional wireless communication channels where the large and small scale parameters are deterministic or can be stochastically characterized, the capacity of qubit carrying quantum channels is definite as the rate at which classical or quantum information increases with each use of the quantum channel 192. Moreover, there exist several different types of capacities for quantum channels, including but not limited to the classical capacity, the quantum capacity, the private capacity, the entanglement assisted capacity, and the zero error capac ITY. The classical and quantum capacities are the two most commonly used definitions. In particular, while the classical capacity measures classical information transmission over a noisy quantum channel, the quantum capacity represents the amount of quantum information, i.e., qubits, that can be transmitted through a noisy quantum channel. We refer the interested reader to 192 for additional insight into each of these channel capacity types. In the following, we discuss the different types of channels, data routing, and open problems within the domain of quantum communications. 
One types of channels within the broader domain of quantum communicationons, we take into consideration the following types of channel, the dephasing channel and the depolarizing channel, 193-194. The dephasing channel, the dephasing channel, also known as the phase damping or phase FLIP channel, applies a bit FLIP in the conjugate basis. The impact of the dephasing channel can be best described as equivalent. 134,022. Volume 8, 2020. I, F, Aculdes et al., 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Figure 15, physical entities associated with quantum networks, 190, to measuring the qubit in the computational basis and then forgetting the result of the measurement. A more detailed treatment of the nuances of the dephasing channel can be found in 193, section 4. The depolarizing channel. The depolarizing channel is often referred to the worst case scenario and describes the fact that the qubit may be left unchanged with a probability 1 minus p with p element of 0 1 or that an error may occur with probability p in this case the error could be one of three types with each being equally likely the bit flip error the phase flip error or both in the event of an error it is assumed that the channel replaces the lost qubit with a maximally mixed state 194 section 2 ie all states become equally likely for example the maximally mixed state with reference to one implies that a zero equals a one two quantum communications networks quantum networks are key to the success of distributed quantum computing and in turn rely on the ability to share quantum states between different quantum devices However, unlike conventional networks that are based on the store and forward paradigm, quantum networks must adhere to the no cloning theorem which prohibits making copies of an arbitrary quantum state 195. In order to overcome this restriction, quantum networks rely on the concept of entanglement 196 described earlier, along with quantum teleportation. The process of quantum teleportation 197 leverages entanglement to transmit unknown quantum states between remote quantum devices through remote entanglement distribution 198. Further, as shown in figure 15, we note the following physical entities that constitute quantum networks 190. Quantum nodes. These are the quantum devices that are interconnected to each other. Communication links. These include both classical as well quantum links that interconnect the quantum nodes in the network. Entanglement generator. This device is responsible for generating the entangled pairs that are distributed between the quantum nodes. Quantum memories. These are primarily used for storing quantum states for the purpose of communication. Quantum measurement devices. Their primary function is the assessment of the generated entangled states. While the aforementioned entities play a vital role in enabling quantum networks, the process of quantum teleportation is affected by the exponential decay of communication rate with distance, which in turn is offset by the use of quantum repeaters. The routing problem then involves the selection of the optimal path from the source to the destinity on traversing one or more quantum repeaters resulting in a high-quality entanglement distribution. Further, the routing framework must also take cognizance of the fact that the physical mechanisms underlying quantum entanglement are stochastic, and that the passage of time leads to loss of entanglement between the entangled pair 198. Expanding upon this, in the following section, we delve into some of the major challenges faced by quantum networks today. Three open problems and major challenges given the vast differences between the classical and quantum domains, there are several fundamental research challenges that are vital to the success of quantum networks, as detailed next. Quantum error correction. There are three major challenges faced by error correction techniques for qubits 199. First, while classical error correction codes assume that data can be duplicated freely, the no cloning theorem precludes the arbitrary duplication of quantum states. Second, since qubits are susceptible to both bit FLIP and phase FLIP errors, quantum error correction techniques need to be able to detect both error types simultaneously, unlike classical techniques that take only bit FLIPS into consideration. Third, there exists the possibility of wave function collapse 200 due to Mayus Yoramans on the qubits performed as part of the error correction procedure. Entanglement distribution. Long-distance entanglement distribution is a key challenge in the realization of quantum networks, impacting the physical, link, and network layers 196. More specifically, at the physical layer, there is a need for quantum error correction techniques, while the no-cloning theorem necessitates a redesign of the link layer. At the network layer, novel quantum routing metrics are required to ensure optimal path selection. Deployment challenges. 
Quantum computing devices require highly specialized data centers equipped with ultra-high vacuum systems and ultra-low temperature cryostats. Further, while quantum teleportation has been proposed as a means to realize quantum networks, it requires the integration of classical and quantum communication resources, which is a fairly complex problem in itself. 12. Tentative timeline for 6G thus far, we have described the manner in which the evolution of societal needs will guide the transition from 5G to 6G, along with a plethora of new and upcoming use cases that will be best served by 6G. We have also discussed the tentative KPIs associated with 6G and the key enabling technologies that will play a vital role in achieving these next generation KPIs, as summarized in Table 2. As shown in Figure 16, the increasing technological readiness and worldwide deployments of 5G systems have set the Volume 8, 2020, 134,023, I, F, Aculdes et al., 6G and beyond, the future of wireless communication systems. Table 2, a brief summary of the KPI impacts and open problems associated with each key enabling technology for 6G and beyond.